giant asshole, bro. Literally. <laughs> like looking at a saucer. <laughs> I mean, let's get this gold on the recording. Why don't you, uh... We are a podcast. We are a podcast. We are a Episode 268. Among the first to start, the twat cause was so smart to lovingly bash our favorite books. But that was long ago, and now they've grown the show, and now they got us in their hooks. Don't throw coins to these bastards, they need bars of gold at least. Someone please keep them afloat. Now let's listen as they once again ramble through a book. Let's get the fucking book. One of them is Tom, but he is barely on. Sometimes he calls into the show. Another one is Joe, no. Is he their joker? Oh no. And Joe, is he the stupid one? Welcome to the Twat, cause we will share our love for books and all our hate in every episode. We'll entertain you, make you laugh so hard you barely can stand up. That is the Twat cast code. You're listening to Twatcast, the Wheel of Time re re read podcast. <laughs> now covering Robert Jordan's The Wheel of Time, book two, The Great Hunt. With me, as always, is Jono. Jono. And I'm Joe. And Tom is frequently, but not always, here, too. Study your mess. And we have a special guest, uh, Malkir Rob from Malkir Talks. Hey, how's it going? Hey, Rob. Glad to be Oh, I'm glad. I'm glad you're glad. <laughs> We're glad that you're glad. I mean, the first question we always have now is, <clears throat> "How's the drinking going?" It's good. I've been stuck on the. I, I had spice from earlier that I needed to finish off, so I've had that. And now I am on to the ciders. So nice. But beet flavored cider. I was just like, yeah, cool. Yeah. You're speaking well, so that's good. Yeah, that's a good to start. Yeah, I'm deceptively good at that. I can get really trashed and still enunciate so quite clearly. Am I. That's probably why I never. And then I slip off the hill, show. and suddenly I'm not making yes. any sense. Yeah, but that's usually after I'm done recording, though. <laughs> oh, does your accent? <laughs> yeah, I can't promise that. You drink, or is that a real accent? My accent. Yeah. I, no, I'm British. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I would have been there with something going on there. I was like, let's, let's play a story. Like, no, no, I'm, I'm, uh, you know, I'm British. Let's just keep this going. Totally sober, no accent. Two beers, <laughs> British. <Beautiful>. Yeah. <laughs> you usually have a very strong Russian accent. And, yeah. uh, you know, yeah. like, uh, and the alcohol like, whiffs past me and then like, oh, British straight away, you know. Yeah. So. Transports you 4,000 miles west, so you sound a little better. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you drink vodka, then it's just worse and worse. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Makes sense. <laughs> All right, well, um, for our listeners that don't know, and by listeners, I mean viewers, uh, what is your uh, podcast all about, Rob, and what do you do? Uh, so my podcast is, is mostly sort of, you know, wheel of time theories. Um, I say that very loosely because sometimes we, you know, talk actual theories about where shit came from, um, like, you know, uh, shadow sport and, and things like that. And then sometimes we get really stupid, crazy. Um, I did an episode where we talked about brand being secretly evil <laughs> in the two rivers with the Leafcast guys. And I've just done an episode about relationships in the wheel of time, but you know, all weird and wacky things like, you know, what if, um, you know, Taim and uh, Logan were a couple and then they broke up and that's why they fucking hate each other for um, uh, in the Black Tower. That sort of actually thing. makes a lot of sense. Way more sense. Yeah. Oh, we had so much fun with it. Yeah. When I, when that comes out, I'll send it to you, Joe. Like, it was, it was a lot of fun. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> so, so, Rob, we have a theory that maybe you'd appreciate. Um, Go for it. That, uh, you know, mm. Mashadar... Um, if you could help me out, Joe, because I, you know, Joe, it's one of Joe's favorite theories, and Joe's been a champion of it. Um, and I, I, I see he's put himself on mute and is quietly laughing. Um, I, was, there you go. I was coughing. I was coughing. I don't want to. I don't want to bother you while you're talking. If you could elucidate him to the Mashadar theory of what it does to your, uh, you know, I think is in book, a couple chapters ago actually when oh, Ram takes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Ram takes Matt's dagger. Or he puts it into the uh, the chest because he doesn't have the chest. Yeah, he yet. tucks it behind his belt, and it's not she. It doesn't have the sheath. 
Oh. I genuinely listened to this episode yesterday on my journey home, and uh, yeah, like his asshole was not feeling very well. I believe is how you yeah, we, we think he takes evil shits for the rest of his life. Yeah, <laughs> I think it's I think it's the main reason he switches bodies in the end. Spoilers, by the way. Yeah, yeah. I never said that. If you had a guess, you know, it's to, yeah. it's to cure it's to cure his hemorrhoids. Yeah, yeah. He's like, I bl- listen, I can deal with the missing hand, and I don't care that I'm constantly bleeding out of my side. But the asshole thing, oh yeah, I can't, I can't do it anymore. Yeah, I'm out. It suck, man. Also, asshole. I really want that dark hair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I don't feel that Fury would take a full podcast. I could, you know, spend about five minutes on that. But uh, you know. I, feel, I feel, I actually feel like. Oh, we I just disagree. Did it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I I, the physical go. repercussions of the dagger against certain body parts i could definitely do a whole podcast on that that would be okay. hilarious oh yeah <laughs> i think you can uh, argue that technically what uh lose there and telemon did was he took that just gently brushed it against the earth and just made this gaping vagina with a uh oh, giant top mark next to it belching out fire <laughs> <laughs> oh my god it really escalated. <laughs> yeah, bit, it yeah. really did. Whole <laughs> time. Yeah. I was about to say, make sure you have me on when you talk about what the dagger does to a nipple, and then Jonas started to talk, so I stopped, and that's what he did. <laughs> <laughs> well, I tell you, we'll, we'll do that, guys. You come on my podcast, and we will do an entire <laughs> podcast on that. Very Not specifically the mountain and the vagina, but, you know, the, what the dagger does to a body sort of thing in general. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I mean, we're happy to come on. What about? Uh, do you do? I feel like I've picked this up here and there on Discord and stuff. Do you do YouTube videos of make oh, recipes dude, I in do oil too time? Much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I do on my. I do. Yeah, I have a YouTube channel and I cook Wheel of Time food. Um, although that's a bit sporadic at the moment, thanks to work and uh, travel and all sorts of stuff. Um, I and do, if you yeah. did one video a month. I'd be impressed if <laughs> coming up. Yeah, so I, I've, d- I've done a few. I was doing one a week at uh, during lockdown when I had no going on. Oh, all but, right. So, yeah, yeah it's, it's more like one a month now. Although well, this week I'm doing a pizza. Um, so obviously not based on something in the books, but I'm doing a white tower pizza where we put in the eight ages. So like the blacks, uh, olives, you've got the gray azure, which is like, you know, uh, some kind of like sardine or mackerel or something. Mushroom, maybe. <laughs> yeah, mushrooms, possibly. I don't know. Uh, you've got like yellow peppers. You've got red tomatoes. You've got, uh, uh, no, no, what do I have for the blue? Uh, blue cheese. Uh, blue um, cheese, that works. Yeah, sure. big slices okay. of mozzarella for the white. It's, it's a stretch. The blue is um, a stretch. Yeah. yeah, what what was uh God there's yeah, there's a few. So I'm gonna yeah, I'm doing like weird shit like that now as well. So and I'm making a cake for the black tail boys. We have I was gonna a, say oh. how much would it cost to get you to send Jono some honey cakes? <laughs> I made That's all he's wanted for his entire I life. made honey cakes. That was my first one pretty much my first video. Um, That's my favorite like, like I don't know what it is about like when Rams is walking through in the first fucking part of the book, just walking through uh Alvere's kitchen and like some of the honey cakes and all that, and I'm just like it just seems so homey. And it's yeah. so weird because that homey area, you know, gets fucking destroyed, you know, like what eight minutes later really uh and yet this boy calls it on to me i'm like oh it's kind of a cool place and yet it never fucking is it's yeah disturbed, but. he talks about it a lot more than you oh, would yeah, say definitely. yeah so what about uh, uh, what about Kooladin's uh buddy that goes into rudy and eats his own eyeballs is that like a delicacy you might do one day human eyeballs <laughs> Yeah. Well, I am. So my last episode, I actually had a, a quote sous chef and I had Narg help me cook. Basically, oh. Narg just bitched off screen about the fact that he wanted meat and I was making a pepper mushroom soup. It's the one that Egwene <laughs> drops on the floor instead of having to go at Elida the first time. She oh, gotcha. Her. That bitch. Um, yeah, she ruined dinner. Oh yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, the whole thing was Narg off screen, uh, off screen kept screaming that he wanted meat in the soup it, to one point where he even threw a packet of meat on the side and I sort of stormed back on and took it off and threw it back in the middle of the So yeah, it was more a comedy sketch than any that's, actual well, cooking going on. But that's, that's the best kind. Yeah. So I don't know. Um, it's, it's, what was it's that guy's really name, Muradin? 
Mirrored, yeah, mirrored in his yeah. brother, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but no, I, I, people have asked me to do... Um, yeah. yeah, they've asked me to do, um, I don't know, Trollock, you know, make a discussion of like, oh, where's the homeless guy who used to live down the street? He seems to have disappeared. But I've got this lovely tree of meat courtesy of Nog. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, yeah, so... Um, the people have asked me to do stuff like that, and yeah, it's, it's in the works, you know. It's, it's, it's a work in progress. It's, it's you know, a big return of the wait, wait, wait. October. Mm. Cannibalism is in the works. Not actual yes. cannibalism. <laughs> okay, okay. Human so eyeballs, Tom. Real human eyeballs. Because <laughs> no, I'm no. suddenly a lot, a lot more interested in this channel. <laughs> you know, fake. It, it's you know, it's, it's fake. Uh, I, it's not real. I'm not killing people. Uh, you know, like that. I, I wonder how many of those you could make what, before like what you'd our be viewers watching a live the police would come <laughs> charge you into just the get house. Busted in. <laughs> what our viewers can't see is Walking that every time Rob says it's fake, he's winking. Oh yes. <laughs> now, Rob, there's just a book. I don't actually ki- kill humans. No, no, <laughs> they just you know. I find them. You know, it's roadkill. You know, it's yeah. just a, it's a bigger version of roadkill. I live next to a busy road. Come on, yeah. you know. <laughs> and I happen to be the driver. Not my fault. It's way different well, scenario. Now you're getting oh. to it. That's, and I knock out all the street. That seems like an overshare. I mean, you know, they don't need to know that. <laughs> yeah, they don't need to know he was the driver. It makes sense to me. Um, there we go. How else is he going to get the freshest meat, Jono? Of course he's the driver. But yeah. we don't want to yeah, talk about that He can't sit outside here. all day no. waiting for an accident. Got to make things happen. We're not recording yet, are we? You know, so. <laughs> sure. Oh, no. <laughs> of course. No, there no, we go. No. Yeah, yeah. This is all a podcast. <laughs> oh, yeah, course. don't look top left. Um, so there's a book <laughs> you probably check into that's called Natural Harvest. You may want to – I can get you a copy of it. Um, I actually oh, – it's actually a Amazon sold – uh, cookbook all about how to use your own semen to cook. So sneak that in. Oh my God. I didn't want to know that give existed. Me the, <laughs> give me the glaze on the eyeball dish. Oh, yeah. wow. <laughs> Tom, you I feel like close to getting that for your wedding. <sighs> <laughs> Rob, when you had the we are, uh, guys on, we are talking about you... babies. Is that how you do it? <laughs> I think that's correct. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just tell her yes. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> so when you had the what? Leafcast guys on, Rob, did you make them formally apologize to you for uh, messing up the podcast with them? No, but being guests was their their apology when ah, um, I see. Okay. when Ryan would because I even it was my own it was a little bit my fault. So when because I was what? one of the guests, you're too not you stop it. <laughs> I know I, when I say a little bit, I'm talking like five percent. All right, it was like ninety five percent. Right, five percent. Yeah, so I was on as a guest for them because they had political campaigns and we had to vote for a best one. Uh, Narg one, if anybody's curious, and um, I, everybody's I was, checking. I fell out. asleep during the episode. I was yeah. curious too. Who's seen? So um, everybody's checking out, cool. and uh, Ryan's like, "What do I got to do? What do I got to do?" It's like nothing, mate. Just leave because when you leave. <laughs> and you're the host, it goes to the next person who clocked in automatically and it just works its way through. I know this because I've left multiple times and come back in when I've been doing it with friends. So I was just like, rather than fiddle around, make me the host or whatever, I was like, just leave. I was the first person in out of those staying. I know it will come to me straight away. It's not an issue. And for some reason he decided to hit, you know, end for everybody instead. (laughs) Uh, yeah, that's it's, it's it's multiple red than buttons to hit in order to fuck so that up. If I told him actually pass it to me, he would have done that instead, and it never would have you know been a problem. But I see. I, Rob, I I'm gonna be I'm gonna be honest with you, Rob. Sounds like a little bit more than five percent on you. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't tell Ryan, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you, you guys are like you, you guys are popular, right? Like, like, you know, Ryan doesn't man. listen to this. You know, <laughs> yeah. it sounds like you authoritatively told him to end it. I was, I had been up since about two a.m. or something ridiculous. No, I'd been up since it had started. When did it start? Seven o'clock at night? Eight o'clock at night for you guys? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eight. Yeah. Eight. Uh, so I'd been up since one o'clock. I'd slept for about forty-five minutes. My show was at half past eight in the morning or quarter past eight or something ridiculous like that. And um, then I went to work afterwards. Which good job, serious. good job for you, by the way. Thank oh, you. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm booking it off next year. Um, <laughs> but, um, oh, I was. Yeah, I, yeah, year, I, would, that, <clears throat> I would say we'd put you in a better time slot, but 
where you are geographic, it really helps us out that you can just do it in the middle of the night. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> like I'm you're, gonna talk, you're stuck with that. I need to talk <laughs> Andrew into it as well because Andrew was an hour ahead of me. So he could take the time slot after me and it would still be really convenient for him. And then you've got like oh, three until three until five just covered so easily. It's ridiculous. Oh, we could That's totally perfect. have Andrew have a, I think we're good. Well, so last year we did like, and this is just bullshit that we don't need to keep on the podcast for all of the listeners when they're like, why? They were just talking about the podcast and they just cut to something else. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and smash the next thing. Yeah, just smash the next thing. But uh, like we gave everyone like an hour and a half time slot or so. Like I, I think we're we're definitely going to make it an hour oh, yeah. and have more people on. But it might even be shorter and have even more people on based on how many people were chomping at the bit to jump in at those horrible timelines and I was just or those time spots in the middle of the night. I was like, because me and Tom were a little worried we we're gonna not be able to fill it for a brief, yeah, that went, brief moment. That went from us thinking we'd have to do like 17 hours worth of it all by ourselves to like, <laughs> yeah, having, like oh, having more shit. people than we knew what to do. And we're like with. turning people down and we're like, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, that was yeah, why that Alex came scary. on mine because you yeah. know, he, I know he, he said straight after it filled up, he's like, oh, we'd love to do it. And so I messaged mm-hmm. him. I was like, well, come on mine. There was a I'm few a of those instances. And we tried to encourage people to like jump onto other people's shows if they'll have them and kind of thing. But like, you know, we don't, we had a lot else to do. So it's not like we followed up to see if anybody was doing that. Yeah, that's fair. But it was so much fun. And yeah, I'm going to book the weekend off next year. So even if I only do one hour slot and nobody wants me as a guest, I'm watching the entire thing. And I'm, I'm going, I've already planned it. I'm going to do, I don't know if, you, so we've got a show here called like Ready, Steady, Cook. And basically you've got to cook like yeah. two or three courses in 30 minutes or something stupid. Yeah, I like <laughs> Ready, Steady, Cook as a name. It's, it's such a bad part. It's delightful. <laughs> I know, right? It's like a race, but cooking. So I'm going to do something like that for the, the slot oh, next year. And try and cook something that takes longer than the slot, but cook it within the slot time I just, as well. I love how much people are like, I can't wait till next year's. And I was like, whoa, what? All right. I guess yeah, it's no, an I, annual thing. It, it <laughs> we're, like, <laughs> we're like half asleep and just like, man, this is uh, taking all, like some effort. And then like, when's, when's next year? And like, oh, shit. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> let's get, let's get oh, through yeah. this one. <laughs> yeah, I, like, um, I, I was saying that before it even finished. I was like, I can't wait till next yeah. time. You know, uh, it went, yeah, yeah it was it was today. so much fun. It went off surprisingly well. It really did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hats off to Tom and me waking up at like six thirty in the morning and trying to get Lance thing on from Twitter and being like, "Fuck you," while he's trying to do you. <laughs> 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 At least he came at the beginning of one of your slots. That worked out. I mean, I'm yeah. sure you planned it that way, but yeah. You know, oh yeah, was... for sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I was just like, God damn it! Why isn't this working, son of a bitch? And then it's like, <laughs> oh, I'm streaming. Hello. Here's oh, a video. Good Here's a video good of bre- some zen. <laughs> <laughs> this is a good breather for everyone to get uh, some exercise and wake up in the morning, yeah. I think. It worked yeah. out well. Yeah. You guys ready to talk about the Wheel of Time? Oh, is that, that what we're here for? Sure, I'm familiar that with that. Uh, yeah, I might have read them. Why not? <laughs> All right, spoiler warning, even though I already said that a few minutes ago. And also, this is a spoiler warning. For people that don't know what a spoiler warning is, that's when we spoil things. And this is your warning that it will happen. <laughs> I love, so I love our episode <laughs> covering the Great Hunt, read by Robert Jordan, chapters twenty-five through twenty-eight. Rob is on here as a guest to drunkenly recap each episode, or I mean each chapter. Sorry, and then we will go into that chapter in detail. Or Rob, some people have just told us about the episode or the chapter we've been we've just talked about it throughout. So I don't know how you're by, yeah. written. by the time they're done, we're just like, well, nothing left to say. Uh, yeah, nothing left to say know, here. I, I don't know in huge <laughs> detail and it, like, I've written down a bit, but some of it I'm just going to skip through to be honest because I'm just like, why did I write that down? That's stupid. So, <laughs> but yeah, chapter 25, Kyrian, right. Kahin, however you want to bloody say it. You know, I know Matt has a fun way of doing it, but uh, yeah, we, we arrive at the city with our stiff ass bloody soldiers or guards as Rand thinks of them and mm-hmm. uh, we've got some nice perfectly square walls and uh, soaring towers 20 times higher but unfinished uh, outside we've got the four gates uh, when everybody's in very very shabby clothes but very very bright <laughs> Uh, made me think of Tinkers when I first watched it and apparently you can get anything there whatsoever uh, which is kind of like a market in London Portobello Road um, if anybody's ever watched an old movie Bed, bed, bed Knobs and Broomsticks it's mentioned in there um, 
<laughs> sorry, if, sorry if I've just done some kind of like you know copyright issue there. Do apologize. Um, no, no, yeah, no. <laughs> you can I just buy, love your reference of bed knobs and broomsticks. Oh, I've also, got a few I references. I did recently here. watch that just because it was on Disney Plus. I was like, <sighs> I'm going to watch this. It's a classic. It's worth watching, isn't it? it's it's worth watching for this for the soccer scene alone. Oh Pretty yeah, good. Oh Pretty yeah, good. that's fantastic. Yeah, I love that. Um, Sorry, I've, I've literally written. Oh no, you can say soccer. I know what you mean. It's fine. <laughs> like when I talk to Americans, I always Americanize my words. And this is a quick tangent. I was talking to an American friend once, and I was trying to talk to him about soccer. Uh, no, about um, American football. football. So I kept saying oh, football. football. And because yeah. he has half British family, he was talking about soccer, but kept saying football. <laughs> so we got really confused because obviously I'm talking about American football. He's talking about British football. And halfway through the conversation, we're like, the, what the fuck? Huh? We really, and yeah. <laughs> it was very confusing. So yeah, Sports I was making it. <laughs> yeah, I'll be honest. When I read CB, because I actually, I, I, I play soccer a couple times a week. Oh, cool. Um, and when I read that, I think center back, but I'm also, you know, like watching football and I'm like, oh, a cornerback. That's not helpful. <laughs> no. God damn it. Um, so, yeah, so I've, I've literally, rich, literally written, you can buy anything and everything on Portobello Road. So, um, but yeah, we get, uh, oh shit, my writing's really bad here. Tap. Tavalin? I don't know. It's very disgusted by the... Uh, oh, it's the, the captain. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the captain guy. He and sucks. Uh, this basically leads on to discussion of the Iowa War. Um, the war that must not be named, I've decided to call it. <laughs> <laughs> Rip off my Harry <laughs> Potter? I know, right? Oh, dear. Um, but yeah, it's, it's the war that never happened, as they like to say. Um, we see some shitty versions of Trolloc puppets. Leafcast have much better Trolloc puppets if you've ever seen it. And Hurin is very annoyed by just all of it in general. Uh, Loyal talks about how Galdrian, I'm terrible with names, I'm sorry, uses right. the king's, king's gift to entertain with Gleeman's, races, fireworks, all sorts of shit going on. Basically just a 24-7 party, which I'm down for. Yeah. Um, and Lowell said, like, Elder Hammond doesn't approve of all this sort of stuff going on and, and how Kyrian is run. Um, and we get eventually through all this to the main gates, and it's like polar opposite. You look inside, and it's like, you know, people very straight laced, nice clothes, no colors, you know, very boring. It's, it's literally like going from the raving party where everyone's on God knows what, and then you walk next door where everyone's teetotal, and, you know, it's yeah. some kind of, you know, I don't know, funeral going on, basically. is that much of a difference. <laughs> um, I've written here in my notes, fucking boring. <laughs> yeah, it sounds horrible. Yeah. yeah, it sounds miserable. Everyone should it's, hang out more in that, uh, the force. Yeah, I mean, why would you go through that gate? It's stupid. Um, we get a little bit of discussion about the Topaz Towers. Uh, apparently, they were once tall enough to deserve the title, but, uh, you know, that all got fucked up by the eel. And um, he then talks about the lack of O'Gear after the last time he was through. Um, we get all the weird shit from the guard of, like, you know, tell me where you stay. You've got 24 hours. Come back this hour next day. And, you know, it's like, well, that's a bit specific, but, you know, whatever. Um, and Rand makes his first boo-boo asking to stay in the foregate. A bit of a muppet there. Disgusting peasant, yeah. Ugh, what an idiot. Um, doesn't know the game of houses. Uh, they asked him, are. But, you know, whatever. He then asks about his spank bank material. Uh, sorry, I mean Slanthir. Oh, wait, I mean Celine. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Third time's a charm. Oh, yeah. Uh, but to, to no joy, no one's heard of her or seen her or anything. Um, and they head off to their inn and they pick the defender of the Dragon Ball. Uh, very ironic, I've I've put here because uh, you know he stays at the defender of the Dragon Ball, but then he brings or causes the Aiel to come back and ravage Karian, um and brings a further five or six clans with him in the process. Yes. Um, so it's very ironic that when his first visit there, he stays at Defender of the Dragon Ball. And then he's like, do you know what? Yeah. Actually, I'm going to screw that up. And, and he's like, no, just, never mind. Yeah, I'm on their side. Yeah, I like that He one. actually made an end later called the Offender of the Dragon Ball. And everyone thought that was the dumbest title. And so he just let it go. It was cut out. Mm. Of the I did not know that. <laughs> <laughs> Joe looks so annoying. Real. A really dumb joke. <laughs> you didn't know I'm that because it's not real, Rob. <laughs> um, yeah, I know. I was playing along with it, you know. I'm a fan of Dan, jo uh, Dan jokes. Dan jokes. Yeah, Dan oh, jokes too. Yeah. yeah, well, that's hand jokes really in the eye, in the wheel of time. Yeah. It's uh, you know, 
Oh yeah, is that uh, still going on? Oh yeah, yeah. Well, I'm still doing that. Yeah, we're uh, halfway through round two currently. So, all right. Well, we'll we'll pick, pin, put a pin on that. We'll talk about it between chapters. Go on. All right. Cool. Um, yeah. Anyway, so they head off. Uh, Rand's he fucks up with his stupid mistakes requests of like, you know, can we all share a room and, and stupid shit like that. Um, and after they've dropped their stuff, he goes off to the foregate because he's like, I'm not hanging around here, and her and bugs off to the bar. Bit of an alcoholic, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, probably. His, his first instinct is to go down to the bar. Yeah. yeah. yeah hide the smell of all the violence with a you know bit of booze, much like I'm doing. So um, it's fun. Anyway, uh, on the way out, we get the burning of the invites. And uh, basically, Rand's info that he's arrived in the city has been sold to the highest bidder. And uh, he's like, no, screw that and burn them. Uh, and her and Rand's Rand, that, you know, don't, don't do that. You're being an idiot. You're going to cause problems. You don't know how to play the game. And he's like, fuck you. I'm off to the full gate. Screw this. I'm not playing the bloody game. Um, and yeah, he's running through and he's like, oh, Gleeman telling the stories of the hunt of the horde. People juggling flutes, harps. You know, he's all very tearful and sad. And then it's just like, wait a minute. What the fuck? That sounds like Tom. And there it is. Ta-da! Tom is alive. Oh, Sorry. yay. Tom's back. <laughs> Tom's back. Woo. I've literally got it in very large letters. What the fuck? And then Tom. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and then I've written motherfucker is alive. <laughs> That's although, correct. Yeah. Although um, like Moraine said that he was alive. Rand didn't really believe it. So, uh, but it's been proven. He's found him. Also, he's a motherfucker because we know what he did with uh, Morgus. So you were right on both counts. There we go. Exactly. Uh, he's like, how did you survive? You know, what's going on? He's like, basically the fate didn't give a shit of me. Uh, give, didn't give a shit about me. And, he'd, um, and I've put here, I think that's really stupid of the fade because yeah. if the fade had just killed Tom, so much would have not happened. And I don't think Rand would have won. I think the Dark One would have won. Just think I about agree. Tom at the very end, he's guarding the entrance. Yeah, yeah, guarding just the entrance to, you know, yeah. Shah Ghul. Killing yeah, what? Killing Moraine's order. Yeah, exactly. All that sort of shit. Countless. Um, and then, all right, not countless, but several. <laughs> yeah, I, th- I think it. He yeah, was this, hiding. He was tucking bodies behind he's rocks. Tucking them away. And he's like, I can't fit any more in this bloody little crack I've got here. You know, like, alcove. Yeah. Five or six yeah. bodies in it, or something stupid. I can tell the difference by the walk. Who can tell the difference by a walk? What? Seriously? Is he a spook? <laughs> anyway. Yes. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes he, is. he is. He's a spy. He's been a spy for you. He is a I spy. I mean, he basically is. <laughs> he is the, the third age version of... The entire book has. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little less slick, though, and slightly older. A mature James is Bond. Is he less slick? Have you seen who he's having sex with in this city in, like, this chapter? Uh, no, no. It's, well, he is currently having sex, but it's not in this chapter. I've, I've got a whole section on that. Don't worry. Like, I've got a little oh, yeah, okay, but uh, basically, going on the off jet, uh, on, on that, uh, they arrange a date at the bunch, bunch of grapes and end scene. That's the chapter. All right, Perfect. boys. I hope that wasn't too long. Nice work. No, that was, uh, good. No, that was, no, very, that was very uh, comprehensive. Cool. Uh, so, a quick Patreon plug we'll discuss uh, later. Uh, what the hell Rafe Judkins and company is going to do with the bizarreness that is care him? Because I don't know. I mean, it's clear that he's not trying to go all. 100% to description of, you know, if you're from Carehan, you must be, you know, dark hair, oh, five short. Yeah. yeah. Uh, at a minimum for the men. Uh, but I do wonder if he's going to continue to have that kind of weird, they're all pale kind of thing. I suspect not. But, you know, that's We've one We've talked for- about this before. They're all going to be played by Tom Cruise. Every single one. <laughs> <laughs> Every, oh my some in a wig god he's not. the perfect <laughs> Kyrie headed isn't he short yeah. pale cocky as fuck you know like <laughs> yeah. he's perfect, he's perfect. He's perfect. <laughs> he plays every he's gonna CGI one one. him onto everybody <laughs> oh, I love that I never considered that there's like head cannon now going on <laughs> <laughs> there's no, there's no reason you should have ever considered that. <laughs> I've ne- yeah, you're like I've never considered that. Like it's a bad idea. Yeah, it kind of is. I've also had a few drinks, so like. All right, uh, Jono, you have uh, some thoughts. Uh, it's, it's a question that kind of like you know this is our first like real 
culture culture that we kind of get ingrained into like i've always wondered like is this really good world building or kind of really shit world building almost that the entire nation looks like this and acts like this and it just does seem kind of nonsensical to a certain extent that a place where that has you know one of the biggest cities in the world that has international trade would all be so after this amount of time similar but you know what fuck it it's a fantasy book maybe they're all racist that could be (laughs) could be i mean i think they they talk about the the nobles being that way at at least yeah i mean top to bottom everyone in the city in in the city yeah yeah you you can't just have nobles i can't have sex with you you're in door i'll have to kill it (laughs) <laughs> Even the poor four gators would not go anywhere near a noble from like Andor. They'd be like, get out of here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Disgusting. Our child would be some sort of average height freak of nature. <laughs> so you never, I could never afford the trousers. You'd be too tall. <laughs> yeah, there's no hand-me-down. Yeah, we have no big tall stores here. It's all <laughs> in, uh, If one person from Karin has sex with anybody from any other nation, it's like the beginning of Elf where Buddy is like too big for the crib and everything around him. <laughs> That's the whole actually, city's trying to raise this giant baby. That's clearly how <laughs> Buddy came about to be, you know. Some I yeah, came yeah, over. Yeah. Some I and, fucked a carry in it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Buddy the baby. Yeah. <laughs> that's rant. Uh, so, uh, also, <laughs> you remember uh, in Dumai's, right before Dumai's Wells, Perrin's watching, like, all this fucking cavorting and shit, and he's so angry as, like, the nobles are fucking the commoners. Like I imagine, because some of those four gators are a little less than pure, possibly. Uh, like you know, nine months later, there's just a giant ethnic cleansing too of those children. Like like ah, oh, fuck it. Oh that my kid god. Look like, yeah, that got hard, didn't it? This is a four gate just like the French Quarter in New Orleans or something? <laughs> I mean, it sounds like they're literally. Don't paid. compare them to the French in our episode ten years ago, Tom. Yeah. Which isn't New Orleans, but I mean, you know. Yeah, it's but it's close, close enough. Uh, I said something along the lines of, "Is this city fucking paranoid as fuck?" Because like you literally never see that in another city ever again. They're like, they're they've never walked into another city where they're like, check in with the guards, tell them what you're saying within 24 hours to the hour. Like that never happens. Or are they being racist because he looks like an I.O. or is it Deus de Mar? <laughs> <laughs> and it's because he's an outlanding lord, like. Yeah, the, oh. the, they they suspect ul- ulterior motives from him specifically. So yeah, yeah. I, mean, I don't know. Like, would that have happened if he had just like made his way into the city naturally and just like found an inn at the foregate? Like, they wouldn't have given a fuck. But like, had he I gone further, into I don't the even city, understand why that they have tried happened? so hard to watch him. He towers like you can spot him in a crowd from a mile <laughs> yeah. away. Yeah, in Kyrie. Yeah, yeah absolutely. You yeah. <laughs> know, it's like you see that man amongst all the children. Oh wait, sorry, that's an Aiel amongst Kyrie Enin. Sorry, <laughs> and he's walking next to an Ogier. Yeah, yeah. no, ne- no need to, to watch. watch. He's either <laughs> yeah. inside or you can see him. <laughs> It's a good point. Um, I don't really. I, I mean, Ron did a great job severing the chapter up. I don't think I have anything to really. I yeah, there are just, things he said that I want to come back on in later chapters, but well, it's really think, it, it's it's really just the return of Tom to talk about yeah, here, probably. which yeah. is cool and it's a big deal. That's well, literally what er- said ten years ago. By the way, we we're just basically like, "Yay, Tom's back!" And then like, no, is it too er- is it too early for him to be back? No, it's right on time. I don't know. It it does seem short in a reread, but it seemed like an eternity when you read it the first time. So I don't. Was it? I don't know if I'm unbiased or not in that. Were any of you surprised the first read through? We all knew he was alive, right? Yeah, Rand did not know. No, Moraine told him that um, Tom was probably still alive, but yeah, and so did Basil Bill and. Well, you say, but, you know, I haven't actually seen him, so I don't know. I don't know. I always kind of, it was such an, a clear Lord of the Rings, like Gandalf is like fly you fools kind of thing. Like it was such a clear, like it seemed like such an obvious he'll be back later. Just run, not fly. Way different. Different verb. Uh, now I feel stupid because I never Incorrect. made that connection. And all I've got is a vision of Tom... Not bashing a staff on a bridge. I guess. Yeah, I've got Tom like just throwing a flute and a harp case at, at Rand, be like, "You will not play the fucking harp." You know? I really hope that's the line in the show. Don't play the fucking harp. And then it's like a crowd 
sea of people gets in the way oh, and he can't God. see him anymore. <laughs> uh, I do have one question here, and that's kind yeah. of if you came in just in nice, you know, four gate clothes with, and you were slightly above Tom Cruise's height and you had a fake accent, could you walk in, say your name was Lord, you know, Lord Rob or whatever, sign in, go to a hotel for one night. Oh, uh, in for one night and then get like six invitations to some fucked up parties. Like it seems good, like uh, that I, if I were a four gator. I would try a couple times, man. Oh yeah. When just you like said walk that, into the, like buy a really nice coat, walk into the big yeah. main city and be like, I'm Lord blah, blah, yeah. blah. Yeah. Be, 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 yeah. be over four feet tall. Yeah. 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 <laughs> when you said invited to a fucked up party, we're talking about Tom Cruise. I was just like, oh, they could just do eyes wide shut for this episode of the show. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's really later on at, uh, corner. It's, at yeah. Toad Hall or whatever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, but all I could think of was like, you get to this party with no effort. Like, fuck. You know, maybe don't take Barthains because it's a little too excessive. But take like, you know, day two birth of bur- burning invitations and, you know, go get yourself, you know, sucked off by some of these yeah, older. Still throw away the first three, but the next three, you're just gonna be like, well, all right. Yeah. yeah. I gotta <laughs> say, as a kid, I would I, like, I would go play around at construction sites. So like, basically, if I lived there and I did that, then they would be like, why don't you just go hang out with a king? Yeah, yeah pretty much. The construction site <laughs> is the fourth gate. So get the fuck out of it. Go play somewhere else. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, that's what he did. He went to see the Chode and Kyle, and they were just like, oh, well. <laughs> he was just looking at an excavation site, and then he was like, this is fucking interesting. And they're like, what do you know, and what don't you know? <laughs> yeah, Let's invite you also, to a lot of want <laughs> Like, you're digging the who, hole. Who would have <laughs> I'm just fucking looking at it, you know? <laughs> you're the interesting one. Who here. wouldn't want to look at that? If you were walking down the street and that was happening off to your left yeah. and you didn't go look at it, you'd be a freak. Yeah. Like, it's just natural course, curiosity. Of course you're going to look. A hundred foot tall statue, you dig it out of the ground. I'm not interested in that. I see there is a theory here. <laughs> on, I walk past actually, that. I'll just those just next if, door to me. Yeah. Just, come on, leave it alone, you know. If, if you just walked right by it, that then I'd be suspicious. I'd be like, yeah. that guy's not interested in this giant fucking statue. Yeah, yeah if I was that cat, then I'd be like, guards, follow that man. He's clearly suspicious <laughs> as fuck. He didn't look at this crazy thing at all. He just walked he right must, by it. He must have buried it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, before we get to chapter 26, tell us about Tam jokes. Oh, okay, yeah. So um, this this started. Oh God, I can't remember really how it started. But on on my Twitter account, I just started to. I, I got inspired. I was reading a joke, and I was like, "My God, if you just said, you know, this character in this location instead, it would be Wheel of Time based, in, you know, instead of you know, our world based." So right. I, was, I, I wrote it and and tweeted it out, and I was like, "This is brilliant." And I, I had inspired. I was just inspired for a few more. So I did it every day for like a week, and. After a week, I kind of like, I don't have kids, just to yeah. throw that one out straight away. Like, Good to you, yeah. I, I don't even have a fucking girlfriend. Um, <laughs> you know, but I don't have kids. I, don't I, I love dad jokes. Dad jokes, I, I just, yeah. I love the stupid sense of humor behind it. I love it if it makes you groan. I love it if it makes you laugh. You know, the whole nine yards. Whatever your reaction, I'm just like, it gets a reaction. That's brilliant because I love the stupid humor. I love clever jokes as well, but stupid humor really gets me. Um, well, you're so Jono's like, kind of a guy, though. I, was like, yeah. I mean, just <laughs> <laughs> that's a different conversation. Um, <laughs> but I was like, I just need to keep doing this because this is no one's doing this, and this is I, I want people to have these jokes. And I was like, well, I can't. I don't want to call them dad jokes, but who's the best dad in Wheel of Time? So Tam came to mind. I was like, I'm calling them Tam jokes. And it kind of stuck. And I've done probably about 110 Tam jokes so far. Um, so I decided to do a bracket for the best ones. And I went through over 100 jokes, found the best 64, randomly organized them into a bracket. And we are halfway through round two of them going head to head to try and find the best Tam joke. The best Tam joke ever. So far. And it's and people be an can find event. that on your Twitter or just uh, all over? Uh, well, I always retweet it on my Twitter. I did the first round and then I've got... Yeah. Um, content creators doing the four parts of round two, the two parts of round three, and uh, someone doing the quarterfinals, and then from the semifinals onwards, it back to my Twitter account. So, but I always, I always retweet it. So you know, you can find it on mine. No yeah, what. I love the idea. The, the worst part is I'm sitting here thinking like, <laughs> you know, Tam technically kind of. Yeah. 
left a few things out. Uh, like, does that make him the best dad, or does that make him kind of where does that put him? But it doesn't matter because Tam is the fucking best. And the idea that he'd be played by a you know, Bruce Bolton is kind oh, yeah. of just so fucking amazing. <laughs> He's I was thinking about that uh, when he said it. He's the best dad, and I was like, "Wait, but there must be somebody else." And then I was like, "Is there? Are there any dads in the Wheel of Time?" Well, this, Matt's I, I will, dad. yeah, Matt's, Matt's dad, dad pretty good. Yeah. Very, well, few, there's very him. few. He's a um, very fine judge of horse flesh, Tom. He knows exactly where to put his fist to tell if it's a good horse. Yep. And then you've got um, as the um, as it said on the the Black Tab podcast, Daddy Davram Bashir, who's Tyler's uh, dad. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Solid. Yeah. But he's, he's is he is he a good dad though? I don't know if he's a good dad. He was like you. He says to his daughter, "You ran off and abandoned us and changed your name." But yeah, that's cool. It's okay. Now you're back. Um, it's, he's a pretty yeah. chill dad. But I don't know. Tam's the one everyone thinks about. Tam is the guy you who saved the Dragon dad. Reborn. <laughs> <laughs> he's 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 the guy who saved the Dragon Reborn from dying yeah. on a frozen hilltop. So or a mountain side. Yeah. Yeah, that's good enough. Yeah, we'll go with that. He's like, he's like, uh, he's like Pa Kent, Tom. Yeah, he's like uh, Joseph from the Bible that was was a ripoff of Harry Potter. I get it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> also makes sense. All right. <laughs> 26? 26. The chapter is called Discord. It's a Rand it's, chapter. It's what a Rand chapter. My, my first note is, um, it's, it's the title is Discord. And my first note says, sadly, not the Twatcast Discord. <laughs> Is that, that thing <laughs> if it was, there. it would be empty. <laughs> so it's a little plug for you guys. It was instantly my first reaction. I was like, oh, it's not this Discord. It's Sadly, not the Twycast Discord, or is it better that it's not? Because there's nothing. Yeah. Well, the story would have taken a very weird turning, especially considering when the book came out. But, you know, I wanted to reference it. Um, we anyway. appreciate it. So it is Rand- Twycast Discord in the sense that, like, we've been around for a really long time, and there we go. our I mean, Discord you guys were the doesn't first. really happen (laughs) (laughs) um yeah well so we got rand running back to um the inn and he just basically scares the shit out of everybody because he bursts in he's like oh my god tom's alive oh you have to meet him come 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 come." and um you know they're like no thanks like i'm cool you know, her is there. Like, Aaron's like, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna drink here. But. Yeah, but he's like, he's gone back to the room because he's like, they were just trying to pump me for information and not in the fun way. So I decided to come back to the room. <laughs> in the know. common room, that's pretty hot. Yeah, exactly. Like, you know, if you're gonna pump me, do it the right way, make it pleasurable. Don't just yeah, invite yeah, you back to yeah. your place. What are you just right by the fireplace? Yeah. That's weird. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, I, I, you know, audiences are fine on the odd occasion, but, you know, not on the first time. That's not cool. Fireplace is uh, romantic, though, Joe. Come on. <laughs> Some people are into well, it. While there's 45 onlookers. <laughs> yeah. It just really got me just <laughs> thinking of, like, eight people trying to jerk Kieran off at the same time. <laughs> oh, my God. It's also, like, 100 degrees, and he's just sweating next to that fire. <laughs> hey, yeah. I heard you're uh, Lord Rand's man. Yeah. yeah. There we go, yeah. <laughs> I heard you're you're so powerful. You're burning uh, you're, you're burning everything in the fireplace. So why don't we get you burning up? So anyway, <laughs> basically, Rand's he just was loyal into it. Um, yeah, it's just kind of a dick move, but he does it anyway. And uh, off they trot. And uh, the date at the, uh, the the bunch of grapes is now a threesome. I've written here <laughs> oh, <that's laughs> rather than just correct. Rand and Tom. It's now Rand, Tom, and loyal. So it's getting a bit crowded. But uh, anyway, we go to the bunch of grapes and we meet Dina. Or is it now it's a foursome or is it date? Yes. And that, that is also what I've written here. Or now is it a foursome? Yeah, <laughs> oh, there that. you go. I'll stop uh, interrupting her. <laughs> no, you're cool. You're cool. Uh, but we've got the Dana reference going on. Um, obviously all that casting controversy. Is it Dana? Yeah. Dana? Uh, yeah. Is it? I don't think it is. I, don't I think, think this is. is misleading. Um, yeah. it, uh, quick, quick tangent. It is only quick. I've predicted that she's like Elaine or something like That's that. That's what I think. Yep. Right. I, I, I actually did an episode on this codename chaos. I was wrong about the guy playing Aram, but the other two, I was like, that is um, Elaine and uh, Gareth Bryn. But anyway, digressing. All right, keep going. They they turn up, uh, they get up to the room, <laughs> and she thinks they're delivery I boys. Saw. I saw yeah. you. But Rand's like, no, 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 no. We're, we're, you know, I know Tom. Like, you know, we're, he, he, we're friends, all this sort of shit. She's like, all right, sit there, shut up, like... <laughs> I'm practicing, so fucking give me space. Um, 
and we get a bit of information about Tom's flute and harp. Um, the best ones, you know, how basically he always bitched, like, oh, my God, I, you know, lost this this flute and this harp. They were like the best ones I ever had. So she's like, oh, you're the, you're the dickheads who stole it sort of thing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> she really does. So, yeah, but all of this, you know, the discussion's been on how he lost the flute and the harp, but she has no way, you know, there's no mention of, oh, yeah, like he threw it to some boys he was trying to save from a fade. So the whole, you know, she's she has no idea who Rand is or Matt. It does yeah. twist the narrative. All she knows is yeah. that he lost his best flute and harp, and then exactly. these guys show up going like, hey, we got his best flute and harp. And she's like, oh, you fuckers. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know? And she's like, did you just find it on the side of the street maybe or something? You know, like he's not spoken about Rand or Matt. And I'm like, ah, oh, dude, come on. That's not fun. Um, or I've written rude here. I was a bit more PG in that respect there. But anyway. <laughs> We all find right. out that uh, Dana has become Tom's apprentice. Uh, she wants to be the first woman gleaming and all that sort of shit. And then sort of the penny drops that Tom's actually a bit of a cradle snatcher. He's getting himself a bit of the uh, the young side sport going on. Um, you know, his, his apprentice quote. But, you know, whatever. That's fine. Yeah. Um, Tom comes in and we get the whole Cayman Road story going on. And um, basically... Tom's first reaction is just like, did you play the fucking harp? No. Or you could have at least tuned the bloody thing. Jesus Christ, come on. You know? And it's like, well. Yeah, it's, he's like, don't touch the fucking harp. And then when he gets yeah. the harp back, he's like, you didn't even touch it? Exactly. You know? <laughs> it's like, dude, I could have sold this shit and actually got the cable in, you know, some sort of semblance yeah, a fucking of... fucking carriage, yeah. Yeah, a carriage. Like, I was starving on the side of the road, sleeping in hedges and haystacks and being chased by dogs and dark friends and all sorts of bullshit. It is You're really saying, dumb. Like, like, it, like, how do we not mention the fact that he's carrying a fuck ton of gold and silver in his pocket <laughs> and like just sleeping under hedges like a dickhead? And constantly asking Matt to sell the dagger. <laughs> yeah. yeah, sell yeah. the dagger. Hey, sell that know. dagger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What are you so, carrying? We don't have any other money. He's just holding a silver coat. Nothing of value. <laughs> we don't have any other money of value. <laughs> but this is this feeds us our dinner every night. You could sell it, and it would feed you more than what you're getting paid. But yeah, or sell know. the harp. Sell the harp. Keep the suit. Yeah. 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 Uh, there we go. You're the best of both worlds. Yeah. Fuck. God damn it. Uh, Why weren't you on this episode earlier? Or earlier in episodes. Whatever the fuck. English. Why was I t- ten years ago? What was I doing? Um, I don't know. I guess <laughs> jerking off. Uh, I was 25. So yeah. So jerking yeah. off. Yeah. Um, I was also living in New Zealand, so okay. the time difference was quite different. But, That's uh, not true. Anyway, back to the chapter. Um, Rand is trying to tempt Tom with the horn. But Tom's like, you know, come on, don't take the piss. The horn, I'll take you somewhere else and we'll buy three. Come on, like, stop having me on. This is a laugh. Um, <laughs> he's like, oh, what have I got here? Oh, your secret love. Uh- all right, okay, so he turns around. Yeah, I was like, my notes aren't making sense. So Rand turns around and he's like, your secret love tells me it's real. Obviously, meaning Moraine says it's oh, real yeah, type yeah. thing. Um, <laughs> whether it... Or <laughs> All right, I've written some sort of weird thing about Moraine wanting some support here that's not making any sense. <laughs> so, yeah, your secret love says it's the horn or she wants yours. And I'm like, that doesn't um, make sense. Yeah. That yeah. Yeah. No, no, I like it. I follow. It's good. Oh Good. my god! Anyway, you mean there is a river you, in Cambridge? You mean his dick. dick curls around like a friend? Yeah, guy. yeah. He's got yeah. he's got like you know the side thing going on or whatever. But uh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, he's very it's tempted. Called Peroni's disease and leave me alone yeah. or him alone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come on, let's yeah, be nice to Tom. He's, you know, he's, on a, yeah. he's he's trying His to be boner really forms a loop de loop. Loop. It's the only way to find the G spot, isn't it? You know. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, so he's tempted to get involved, but he's like, no, I'm not even doing that. Even, be, you know, even though finding the horn means uh, time again is coming, he's like, no, I'm not fucking getting in. This is, no, not doing it. Rand insists, and Tom's like, fucking stop it, dude. Like, you know, he gets quite angry. Um, and this point is when he's just like, he's already sent Dina out of the room, but he's like, Rand's like, loyal, give us a minute type of thing. I'm like, we've got to talk yeah. shit. Um, well, fuck, yeah. And then it gets a little sort of like more serious and Rand's asking about the career fun cycles as opposed to saying the dragon prophecies. And Tom talks like the old tongue and sort of like the translations of shit. But um, if I'm permitted, I might read what he spoke. So he actually, actually talks about, uh, he actually quotes the career fun cycles here. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Absolutely. Uh, so. <laughs> Jonna does this to us all the time. 
that, oh, okay, cool. Well, you know, uh, well, we're, we're, you know, best buddies with the It's dad usually dad. vague dick references or something like that, though. I <laughs> was going to be literal and actually quote the, the, yeah, the books. It's usually yeah. about go, go somebody, go somebody jerking a wrist. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so twice and twice shall he be marked, twice to live and twice to die. Once the heron to set his path, twice the heron to name him true. Once the dragon for remembrance lost, twice the dragon for the price he must pay. Um, Rand points out that the sword makes five herons, but deliberately hides his hand where he's been branded. And we get the second part from Tom. Uh, Twice dawns the day when his blood is shed, once for mourning, once for birth. Red on black, the dragon's blood stains the rock of Shiagul. In the pit of doom shall his blood free men from the shadow. And that's pretty much it. uh, for the fucking awesome end of the chapter, though. Uh, oh, no, I'm lying. There's a little bit more. Not much. Oh, a little bit more. <laughs> you, you just Shit. flipped like three pages. <laughs> I did. So I was like, because well, I've, I've misread you it. largely, Tom. <laughs> I do, yeah. Um, but yeah, um, he says, then we discuss the, prophecy, the impossibility of the prophecies. And he's like, well, you know, have you got ice and ice still sticking around? What's going on? And Ren's like, no. Um, Rand drops information that basically the heroes will fight for anybody, even dark friends. And Tom's like, oh, shit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that kind of leads him on to say, well, I thought Moraine was after you. Um, but, you know, I thought you were the man that could channel. That was the only sort of trouble I said I get into. And then Rand's yeah. like, oh, shit, that's what your nephew was going on with. That, that's the shit you had going on with the Aes I, wasn't he? And he's like, mm-hmm. yeah, okay, fair enough. Like, let's, we'll talk a little bit about that, but let's get in too much detail. Um, and we get a little bit more of Rand saying, come on, come, come, like, join me. Let's, you know, fucking go, go off with a horn. You can be famous and all that sort of shit. And he's like, no, just take the flute and fuck off. I'm out of it. You're out of it. You're not a man who can channel. I'm, not, I'm out of it. I don't need to save you anymore. And, and, and that's it, done and dusted. And, and and that is the story over for that chapter. Right. Is it weird? Is it weird how hard Rand's trying to get Tom to go with him when he spent the entire book trying to get everyone to fuck off? <sighs> oh yeah, yeah. But I think he, I think there's two things there. One, the horn, <clears throat> which is obvious. I mean, yeah. I think he genuinely just knows Tom will want to be a part of that quote unquote story and to see it happen. And I don't think there's any like weird motivations there. The other flip side of that coin is the weird motivations of Tom helped or tr- at least tried to help save somebody else that was a male channeler. And I think it's a lot of selfishness on Rand's end trying to get Tom to be involved because somehow he might help him or maybe he'll at least give him honest advice or I don't know what he's looking for there, but I, I think there's a lot of for? like confidence that he trusts fully. And I think he would see Tom as that, that person. I'm just, yeah. Cause he doesn't, he, barely, he doesn't really know him that well. He doesn't know. I mean, not really. No, no they spent- from a, he romanticized someone after you've been gone for so long. That's why. And, I they, yeah. and they, and I guess, and they die saving your life. So yeah, yeah, that, that'll yeah. kind of help. <laughs> there's, there's a hero complex there, isn't there? So, but uh, but yeah. I think that's a very good point. I mean, the people he would trust, are, uh, you know, Matt and Perrin, uh, they don't know a goddamn thing about the world. Uh, and then the person who knows the most about the world that you know he knows is Moraine, which he doesn't trust far as shit. So, this is a you know kind of happy combo of trustworthy and knowledgeable, and just say, and you know, yeah. actually, once he puts together the pieces about his you know his nephew, like, holy shit, you know. Because there's more than just, you know, do you want to take the horn? I also can channel. Uh, that kind of thing. So, like, yeah. It, he makes a perfect kind of escort. Do you think Loyal's feelings are hurt? Because he's like, I'm here too. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah I he mean, wants the room at that point, right? <laughs> yeah, he I considered like, that. I mean, Lo- Loyal's quite maybe young in the way he comes across, isn't he? Like, I mean, well, that's how I was read. Maybe. Uh, maybe Rand's racist against tall people the way the Carhina races against him for being tall. <laughs> maybe Rand still thinks he's part troll. You know? <laughs> I like how Tom yeah. dismissed Loyal by calling him a beardless ogier. Like at one point he was just like, oh, beardless uh, ogier and a, and a farm boy found, and a shepherd found the Horn of El Air. Uh, you know, yeah. kind of thing. Like, and, he, and I'm just like, so that he's known a lot of ogier and also he clearly indicates that Loyal is just a child to him still, even though twice as old. Joe, I thought you were saying even though Tom's fucking the child right now. 
<laughs> you can't dismiss Loyal if you're going to bang Dana. So let's get to that. I think that's one of those things. That, first off, I'm fascinated by who's going to be the first Glee woman or Gloman. It's, it's really. I mean, Gloman? I guess the title is Gloman. I Glee, Glee woman. Uh, I mean, it's not going to be her. Oh, yeah, well, she died. No, yeah, spoiler warning, she dies, but you know. Is that in the yeah. next chapter? No, it's not. It's not the no, next No, no, it's a, it's a it, bit from now. Toward, yeah, it's several chapters away. But, but this is a re re read, so, you know, that's fine. Yeah. Um, oh, no, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. No, we don't care. Uh, about that. I will say, we it's talked about Tom that killing she's... people outside the place. That is true. Game. Yes, that is true. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that's the last one. <laughs> intermediary is important. Uh, yeah. It's clear she's got daddy issues, right? I mean, there's no doubt about that. You know, the fact that, you know, she's sitting there, A, with a dude who's like crippled, old, white hair. Uh, well, like, she likes tugging his beard, shall we say. <laughs> yeah. How, so, how, um, how, old it, how old is he supposed to be? Your age. So old. Yeah. <laughs> I was going for the fact that Joe is not paying attention because he's talking to his wife right now, but I was yeah, going to make yeah. your wife being well younger than you, Tom, but, you know, Joe ruined it. Oh, yeah. I guess I should stop talking. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How much younger is your wife than you? Like 50 minutes? I really made, really made a mess of this. I'm just going to mute. <laughs> and your name is Tom. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> the parallels here are... Uh, I think so, Tom Maryland's a great man and everything he does is right. So. There we go, you know. <laughs> I didn't realize we had Tom on the podcast. There we go. <laughs> yeah. By the way, you may want to tell Lindsay you love her because it's not gonna go well. But regardless, that's unfortunate. Um, this is just this is just for Jono, but I wrote Rand returns Tom's instruments and he fingers them right away. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think we don't get that? Yeah, but it's just for John. It's <laughs> oh, not at all relevant to anything, but like Tom Merrill is complaining about like, it seems like the first actors in history. Is that right? He's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, I, love I love that, that moment. He walks in and he's like, they've got these things called actors. <laughs> the actor? And he's like, they're going to ruin this place. They're going to ruin it. They don't want to I'm like, is this how is walking this around place? pretending to be Rogosh yeah. Eagle Eye? Is, is, would this be, <laughs> is, is this like is this like film stars being, you know, like, oh my god, you're a soap star? Like what the fuck? Yeah. You know? yes. <laughs> but Are you trying to be a film star? star? <laughs> yeah. I have it. You know what? Maybe I don't know. You they know, do but, they they do at the very least have to get Tom Cruise to play some of these actors, right? Oh, there's yeah. no doubt. God, that would be hilarious. I think that's his title. Like it's one of the it's a Seafolk title, his first actor. <laughs> one thing that always does just kind of, I guess maybe not always. So I'll re- re- rewrite that again or re-say that again. I'm a little drunk too. Um, Are you? I you your, uh, your prophecy and the talk of Owen. Um, it's kind of really fucking cool. This is the first reference to really what the vileness is. Um, which is like why Owen was killed or not killed, but he died instead of going to the tower where he's supposed to be gentled. This is a, like a clear reference to the fact that at this time, the Aes Sedai were doing things, especially the Redajah, not appropriately. Oh yeah. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. To kill off anyone because the Black Ajah wanted the Reds to do it and they were able to do it because of, was it Galena? Um, I think so. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and so she, kind of order these hits on anyone who may be lucky, anyone who could channel that kind of thing. And so they had him killed early to try to kill what eventually was Rand. Um, yeah. I don't think I really re- recognized 10 years ago when we did this, that this was in fact the first reference to the vileness that Cadsway mentions like five books later. It's pretty fucked up. And apparently it's what really kind of drove Tom out. Wasn't so much getting, you know, going to see his nephew and leaving like, you know, abruptly but when he came back he had a fight with elida as well because she was a red and elida used that to separate tom from more or more gays and it's like it gets really kind of like a deep ingrained point that's not really touched on too much it really isn't yeah they don't i mean you have to know what you're fucking talking about throughout the entire series and even outside of the series to like even glean that information from that little line like it's that that takes like 
an insane amount of rereads like we've done, you know, like to where you're like, Oh, I get this now. This is what they're talking about. Deep, yeah. deep, deep cut. Yeah. Well, it's, it's the whole, um, you know, the, the red Aja would try and set up people and men who could channel to, you know, be a bit sort of fake dragonish to then take them down later on and get a yeah. bit more and, esteem yeah. from it. That was, and that, that, that was kind of by the later, movie. the later, end game part of it but like yeah. the beginning was just what john is saying it's like where exactly. they're just like hunting people down and killing them yeah and there was oh, it, it was just a guy that like <sighs> l- was like lucky and didn't die when he fell down the stairs or something and that would just yeah like, like uh, owen was never going to make a great fake you know uh, false dragon i don't know why yeah. I'm saying <laughs> oh, he was never going to make a great false dragon so they were like well we'll just you know fucking gentle you and hide you off the side but you know yeah they might have found him and gone thing. he's already too crazy let's just kill him it's very possible yeah I mean, we'll, we'll never know he, now. Tom said he was sort of um, he, he losing made it a little three bit, years. Right? Yeah, yeah, he made exactly. Yeah, Rob's right. He made it three years, and, and it was only the last year that he started to lose a, you know, go a little bit weird. I think is well, not the actual description, yeah. but that's the well, that's what the it. people yeah. in his like town said or something, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it was the the Reds and or Blacks who uh, kind of like announced like this guy's a false dragon gentleman and just left him on the side of the road almost. So he and his wife, you know, were chased out of town and just died outside of town. Like they weren't killed by mob, but they were in essence killed by the mob because they didn't, you know, have a home, didn't have a place to live. And Cause they didn't have a harp yeah. and a flute. Yeah. Yeah. They didn't, yeah. Silver chased, especially. Well, Tom was almost stoned to death just for being his uncle, wasn't he? So, well, yeah, he mentions that too. That's, that's pretty fucked up. <laughs> yeah. yeah. As it should be. <laughs> hey, I'm Kevin. I'm in, hey, I'm in, I'm new in town. I'm here to check on my nephew. Oh, what's I'm a Gleeman. Oh, get the <laughs> fuck out of here! <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> Darlene, get that fucking rock. We're going to throw it at him. I don't know what accent that was. I'm really sorry. <laughs> I don't know what that was. Well, it's important forever now. It seems like you were looking for a southern accent with a pitchfork kind of thing. Yeah, I was, yeah I'm terrible with accents. Um, the only, people always say, so I did You're really accent. good at that fake British accent, though. I know, yeah, I right? That's say, the only one I'm good at is the fake you're British accent. You're crushing it. Um, yeah. But... I, I did an episode on my podcast and I, I did this weird accent for a, a murder. Um, and it was all sort of, it was a very casual one. I, I can't even do it now, to be honest. Like, it's just really weird to think about it, but um, everyone comments on it. They're like, my God, that's hilarious because it was, it was the most uh, unscary thing you could possibly imagine. In terms of voice <laughs> acting. For a like, it was what, just like what descriptive a, word is he about to say? A really, a really chill guy who was just like, I don't even bother my neighbors for a cup of sugar. I, you know, I've never pissed anybody off in my life. I, I barely even raise my voice type accent. It's uh, like a Matthew uh, McConaughey. Uh, yeah, almost something like that. And it was the conversation of Agonor and the Murdral where Agonor's like, yeah, come here because I want to do some testing on how you have all your magical powers and shit. <laughs> and yeah, that's the only time I've done a good accent consistently. And I couldn't tell you how I did it. So I, I do apologize oh. for my accents. I'm terrible. Oh, it's British. It's, fake, it's fine. fake British is the only one I can do. Fake British is good though. You're solid yeah. on that one. Right. So well, 10 years we? ago, Jono suggested that Dina could have been in upgraded men if she had had more time and didn't die. And then me and Tom proceeded to jump down his throat and tell him how stupid that was. It's really upsetting. Because we uh, love that. Do you know what? <laughs> I can see why you said this. I absolutely I can. I don't understand why we're still friends with Jono. I, don't, I, must, I must have been extremely drunk when he said that and forgotten it the next day. I mean, I thought you guys were friends, you know, or quote friends, but actually enemies or however it works because uh, it gets you good ratings, you know, like that, that was it, wasn't it? You know? Yeah, <laughs> that's it. We're only, We've actually we're never met. We're only yeah. friends for the show. We actually hate Jono and all of his suggestions outside of the show. Uh, controversy causes, you know, viewership. So, you know. <laughs> And coitus. <laughs> and coitus, there we go. It was just something when I was listening to the old episode today, I was just like, that was because John, I was like, hey, how about this for an idea? And Tom's like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> All right. Jesus. <laughs> and then I immediately followed on that. And I was like, okay, well, uh, apparently we're fervent men lovers. Wait, we've known that for years, but I guess uh, that's when it first came out. <laughs> wow. Everything the mere hint of the idea amazing. that men wasn't amazing. Well, anyway, you know, she was good. Yeah, chapter 27. <laughs> the Shadow in the Night. Which is a weird title. It's just called, it's just Full Moon. That's pretty easy. 
Yeah. Yeah. No, total eclipse, shadow in the night. Total Thank eclipse you. of the heart? Just, just all of it, just night. Well, I suppose you can't have shadow without some light, so you'd have to have a moon of some kind, wouldn't you? So. Yeah. Anyway. So it's the got, street lights. It's just, yeah, there we go. It is the street lights. Yes, there we go. That makes sense. Um, we've got loyal complaining or bitching about Dina, cheating at dice. Oh, poor you. You got done by a woman, Cleveland. And Rand is brooding about his experience with uh, Tom and, and all that sort of shit going on. Shock and horror, Rand broods. And anyway, as uh, as they're walking back, you've got uh, the bullshit puppet Trollocs coming around and basically shit hits the fan and Rand is forced to kill a Trolloc because it's not a puppet, it's a real thing. The moon rises out of, uh, no, the moon rises over the lakes is the uh, move he uses, despite the fact he's not been taught the proper sword forms yet, I feel. Or am I making that up? No, he studied with Lan in the beginning of his book for quite a while. I mean, who knows how much he learned, but obviously he learned some shit. So he kills one with that, but he's grabbed by another. And, you know, you, you're like, shit, you, you know, is he going to die or something? And he's saved by Trolloc. Uh, saved by Trolloc. Saved by Loyal, who kills the Trolloc. Bit of a badass move. Um, but whilst they're just struggling together, Rand tries to channel. And basically, he's just too impotent to get it up. And um, Loyal ends up having to kill the Trolloc. Which he yeah, he's depressed <laughs> about, but he understands that it had to happen. Uh, more uh, as they try and run back to the the city, basically there are just more puppets abound, and uh, Rand realizes that the Fane just knows where I am. It's like shit, he's coming to get me. Um, and every time they turn around, there's just more. I've put zombie puppets now here. <laughs> There's more zombie puppets herding them away from the city. Uh, but I like, this was this was a fun thing for me. So Fane has sent the Trollocs in with these the dark friends and, you know, they're mm-hmm. all like puppeteers on strings. And rereading this chapter um, for this made me think of the very end where Mashadar has them all as like zombie puppets. And I'm like, my God, the foreshadowing there. Fane, <laughs> Fane has sent them in. You're like, go in put them on, you know, poles and, and string and bullshit. As yeah, if they're pretend puppets. to be puppets, yeah. I will control, you know, like, I am controlling you, sending you in as puppets, and there's Mashadar at the end, stealing Trollocs and Fades and all sorts just to be his puppets to... Holy fuck, you know. I forgot all about... I mean, I've yeah. never made that connection. That's an interesting connection. I'd never made that connection either until then. Just like, <laughs> I'm sure that's accidental. Yeah. I, you know, well, I don't feel... You never know. I mean, it Robert could be. Robert Jordan wrote them both. Don't yeah. question the timeline on that. There we go. Um, so, yeah, so they've got all these Mashadar puppets following them around and, and herding them away from the city. And, and basically, they've got no choice. But they're about to break out into the open and be tracked down. They've got no choice but to, to try and sneak into somewhere, uh, which is the Illuminators uh, area of the city. And I've got, uh, I've, I've given her a new name, by the way. I'm not going to go Celine or Lanthir. I've just gone Slanthir. Slanthir. I like it. <laughs> we, we have Slanthir appearing, and it's just like, the fuck? Where did you come from? Like, huh? <laughs> what? <Yeah. laughs> this makes no sense. I'm going to buy it, though. <laughs> Even when I'm reading it, I'm like, what? Like, I know this is not a real person. I know she's, even I, even on my first... She literally just walks up to them and goes, you guys are in a tight spot. Yeah, it's like, like, what the uh, fuck? (laughs) Rob, I love the fact that, like, I've had some friends that that wanted to read the books. They're like, earlier on, like, it seemed suspicious. And they get here and they're like, what the fuck is wrong with Rand? Like, I couldn't have to, like, get on a reread or, like, even, like, really think of it that difficult, like, deeply. You just... Like, this chick only walks in at the weirdest time, and Rams just, you know, like, that must be some, like, heady pussy smell that he's on. Oh, uh, like, yeah. I don't know. She Although is spicy. She may want to get some steak out. That's not really a normal scent in my mind. Well, yeah, I mean, I've got it written down here um, about the, the spicy scent. Um, there's there's got to be something about that. I mean, is this like a, uh, you know, a scented version of compulsion going on? Who knows? Um, it's that, like when Moraine sent their scents far off, like on the wind to throw the trollocs uh, off. She's doing it with her vagina. <laughs> we, <laughs> we love these jokes so much. We keep making them for every guest. I love it. That's brilliant. Um, 
<laughs> so she's turned up and Rand's having a what the fuck moment and he just sort of panics and he's like fucking get out of here what are you doing we've got trollocs <laughs> and basically she's like you're a bit of a dickhead you've just let them push you around like what the fuck <laughs> totally chill like it's like ah there's trollocs who cares I'm just a chick I don't give a fuck like we know you she's know not we know she can channel you. we know that she can just be like bush you're dead but he doesn't know that and yeah. you know the dumbass readers for the first time who don't make this connection I'm sure there might be some out there and hey it's just a great reveal if you don't realise it it's just a great reveal later on in the books when you finally figure it out and it's just like wow you know um, so also if you don't realise it according to you they're yeah, idiots yeah but idiots that's still an enjoyable way I mean you know because you get on later on and you're like oh shit I've been an idiot and then when you do then you do a reread you see all the, the clues and you're just like Wow, that was actually really fun to not realize it was her, and now I know it's her the whole time. So, it's idiot in a nice way. <laughs> and I'm sure there's very few out there. So, anyway, now, now I've alienated I part mean, of your audience. Statistically, there's got to be a lot. <laughs> you, haven't alienate, you haven't alienated part of the audience. You probably alienated all of them. <laughs> yeah. they, listen, they listen to this. I suddenly get They're not a thousand great. down likes on anything I post. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, I've lost people around by. Um, so, yeah, so she's berating him, and uh, he's just like, hey, take my cloak, I'm hide you, sort of thing. She goes, Seek the oneness. Be calm. One who would be great must always be calm. And he's just like, Shut the fuck up! We've got a Trollocs chasing us! Come on! Um, I don't want bloody greatness! <laughs> so, anyway, they're stuck at the wall. Trollocs are coming, and she's just like, oh, There was a door there, idiot. Come on, let's go that way. And they're like, what? That's really fucking lucky. <laughs> I've yeah, got what the are the of door being there? When I first read this, I'm like, the fuck is going on? She just strolled in. He's like losing his mind. And it's like, oh, there's a door there. No one looked at. And I'm like, huh? <laughs> so anyway. She just carved a door with a one power real quick. Yeah, that's the only thing I could think of at the time. <laughs> but, uh, you know, obviously, uh, Loyal was like, oh, it's the Illuminators, it's the Illuminators. Obviously, far slower than that. It runs, it, it, it Illuminators, they will kill us. It's not what he says, so I'm just doing a bad imitation there. And he's like, it's better to get I arrested than killed. I'm trying to channel a little bit of Michael Kramer there, like, run, run. I don't know, this is really bad. Um, <laughs> Anyway. I'm enjoying it. It's good. You can go on that. Ah, oh, thank you. Uh, but as, as Rand says to him, it's like, you know, humans wanting to kill us for being trespassers is better than, you know, Trollocs just trying to kill us in general. Like, you can probably right. barter with the humans a bit. Anyway, Slam Fear is flirting like an absolute hussy at this point. You know, she's just like, oh, danger turns me on. You're handling this so well. After pointing out that he's handling it like a dick just two sentences before. Um, like dick, but, you know, fine. Yeah, she's like, I like you, Dick. So she rubs up against him. We can sniff the spicy fragrance of compulsion. Um, <laughs> and as they sneak in, we've got illuminators everywhere and, you know, like... You know, is everything set for the fucking shit going on later? Um, <laughs> you can tell my notes have really degraded at this point because I'm just no, they're getting better. Crap. They're getting better. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also the alcohol is getting more and more influencing. No, so yeah, I'm good with John. I'm, I'm, I'm on I'm on John's page here. You're you're doing a good job. Keep going. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> All right. Sweet. So so Rand's there and he's like in awe of what's going on. He's like, "Fuck, I'm in Illuminator's place." And no- Loyal's there, just like nervous as shit. I think he's going to lay an egg or something at this moment. He's that bloody, you know, whatever. And, <laughs> And Slamf is just there, just like, <laughs> I don't know. Um, and Slam is just there, like, oh, it's all good, it's chill. Like, who gives a fuck? You know, because you know she she can do anything, but we don't think that. Um, but yeah, loyal in his stupidity and nervousness, uh, basically knocks over the racking and, and sets off uh, a preemptive dragon. I'm gonna say this is like a bit of foreshadowing for dragons because it's you know. Yeah. Yeah, Firework yeah. on the side is, in effect, a dragon, isn't it? Um, it just yeah, that's exactly. I, just, I hadn't thought about that's what they were called. Yeah. I guess, or no, you're giving it a name to it. Never mind. Fuck it. I did yeah. obviously get that. Yeah. Um, so, you know, the, the fire, firework uh, shoots off. It's, it's the one that goes off in the sky first. And, you know, when they're trying to hide, it's just like, you know, they set off fire with this shit. So everyone's coming out from the illuminators and they're like, uh just tuck up here and hope they don't see us type thing and you know Slamfy goes sometimes if you are very still I don't know what accent that is Jesus Christ that's not a accent is it so uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm 
I doing? Sometimes if you have to still, no one will see you. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> like they're anyway. all Tyrannosaurus Rexes. <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> the ray is coming out with a stomach. You're, you're a great pig. You fucked shit up. I'm gonna fire you, but only after you've cleared up all the fucking mess. Um, <laughs> I'm like, you're gonna fire me? I'm not clearing up any fucking mess. I'm going out with you. Anyway, <laughs> sorry, I've got the giggles. Um, <laughs> so, so Rand's obviously like, that was really lucky, but we're not going to get any more luck tonight. And Lamphere's like, well, great men make their own luck. And he's just like, shut the fuck up. You know, like we are trying to not be caught here by two different sets of people. Stop preaching shit at me. Uh, <laughs> and uh, he's like, right, you, you fuck off with loyal down there while I try and create some kind of distraction because we've got Trollocs sneaking in and I get all sorts of shit going on. <laughs> and so this is where we get the firework knocked on its side um, just to try and create distraction. But he actually points at the Trollocs and, and off it goes and it's just like massive explosion. Um, shit hits the fan you know Tamaz is basically you know lucky to not get killed at this point in my opinion and and, and they fuck off too um, and it gets very very <laughs> my notes are very very pale here like Jesus Christ I've written like two lines for the rest of the chapter um, that's perfect I think that's yep. basically it though yeah that is yeah. pretty much it they yeah. dash off back to the inn and there is a letter waiting from Landfair which I've got here ready to read and um, he obviously he's like freaked out that there's a letter there waiting for him he's like <clears throat> When I think I know what you're going to do, you do something else. Well, that sounds like how a man would describe a woman. (laughs) (laughs) But this is a woman describing a man, so that's fun. Uh, You are a dangerous man. Perhaps it will not be long before we are together again. Think of the horn, or is she thinking of his horn? Um, Think of the glory and think of me, for you are always mine. Dum, dum, dum. And Rand's like, are all women fucking, well, he doesn't say fucking, but are all women fucking crazy? And uh, yeah, that's kind of it. And he's like, yeah. why the fuck is Inkta not here? And smash the black. We're done. <laughs> all right. So much to, well, there's a lot to unpack in this chapter. There is a lot. Did, that's why I was trying to be quick with the chapter because it's like, there's yeah, so that's much to good. talk that's about. Actually, yeah, that's actually, that's, that's good. Also, that was fine. That was good. Yeah, um, yeah it was very good. Did she make that? Did she make that door out of the one power? No. No, well, I don't it, think so. No. So, it's always so, weird though, right? It is weird. Oh, very it's just, weird. It just appears, doesn't it? No, so like, there's a reference Maybe she to the fact that I, initially like with the one power, but I think it was a real door. I think it's it's a real door see, because it, Ludra and Tammuz are talking about the fact that like, you know, did you lock all the doors? Did you bar all the doors? And so odds are that she somehow like Tom was referencing like unbarred it just to kind of that's where they're clearly being shepherded beforehand or she could ma- manage to you know when they get there and take off the bar i don't know how that would be i, su- I um, suppose she could have hit it hit it with a pa- like a mirage to try to funnel them towards danger because she obviously wants him to do something fucking ridiculous yeah she wants him to yeah, yeah, yeah. All she wants like, like she's, she's putting trying to put him in a corner so he has to use the power it's How bad would Lanfear want to fuck Vin Diesel from the Fast and the Furious? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, fast pretty badly. Bad, you know, like he likes danger. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I feel he like. Lives his life a lives his life quarter mile an hour. Yeah. Wait, that's <laughs> at a right. time. Qu- quarter mile at a time. <laughs> Same thing. Same thing. He's suddenly he's suddenly so slow. <laughs> <laughs> my God, quarter mile an hour! Like I think, I think the garden, I think the snails in my garden move faster than that. <laughs> is this is this is this Vin Diesel when he's like ninety nine years old? Yeah. He's pushing the Zimmer frame down the street. Yeah. Same thing. Yeah. When I was car younger, and when I was too quick, you know. <laughs> so starting oh off, I love this dumb scene at the beginning uh, with like the Trollocs and the Dark Friends. It totally reminds me of the uh, Carnival scene from uh, Moonraker when they're in Rio, and all of a sudden, like like they're like, ah. like trying. To- in there, like into that one glass room, I think, or where they're making the glass things. I guess that's in Venice. Anyway, um, 
and like Jaws is coming up in the middle of Carnival with like like flunkies, and like like they're trying to like run and like hide. It's so like weirdly tense, but at the same time, just like bizarrely like this is not. Yeah, it's yeah, exactly. Comedic is the right term. It's a great comedy. I'm trying really n- hard not to to interrupt you, Jonah, but you literally said this ten years ago. <laughs> ah, <laughs> fucking ex- <laughs> perfect. I hope in- we haven't grown at all. <laughs> no, no. I, I, I hope in ten years I can look back on my podcast episodes. Hopefully, in ten years I'm still doing them because I love doing them. I, I hope in ten years I can look back and think, "Fuck, I'm out of content. Let's do what I used to do and just rehash the episodes and be like, I've still got the same point of view." You know? Yeah, I, I mean, it is an interesting note that we come across a lot. <laughs> it was- yeah, back ten to years the, ago, I said oh, something along book, yeah. the lines of, "Is Lanfear hot or is it all fake?" Because we were talking about Mask of Mirrors and how Celine isn't really how she really looks. Yeah, and Tom basically said, "Don't ruin this for me." <laughs> 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 and then a joke that would completely not be allowed today. Jono said, "What are you gay, Aja?" <laughs> <laughs> That is inappropriate. <laughs> oh yeah, as opposed to you know, the other. Oh my god! I, no, I, 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 I can't remember where I had this discussion, but someone's like, when she's Celine, is she making herself with the mask and mirrors look less hot? Because I think she's just making her look the most lo- not not ageless, not like right. Isa die like you know, like yeah. just toning it down slightly, kind of thing, like. But would she be ageless? Because the ageless effect comes from swearing on the oath rod. I guess not. I don't. I don't know. I don't. I assume she's like, you know, loose there in age, like forty, and she's making herself look twenty. But I mean, in terms of an Aes Sedai, even without the oath rod, forty doesn't really look that different from twenty. No. So like, don't I don't agree. think she's doing a whole lot there. You know, like I think she's just like it's making not like herself look slightly younger. You know? Yeah. We've done. Um, we've. We've done this joke five episodes in a row, but it's again, it's the hot girl in the movie that's oh, yeah. playing the nerd, and then she becomes hot later. <laughs> With the sun, the glasses come off, and the hair yeah. shake, the all, ponytail all, comes out, you know. All she's doing is wearing glasses. Right. Yeah. Okay. She's wearing the, um, the third age equivalent of the glasses. Gotcha. Yeah. I have a, I have a, a lot here. But, well, first of all, you mentioned the king's gift and the 24 hour party, which is how I conceive that whole forgetter area. Yeah. And then the second the sun goes down, like the streets are empty and Rand's being herded by Trollocs that are real and not puppets. And I'm like, where the fuck did the party go? Oh, this shit. Is, yeah. This is a 24 hour party and the party is just gone the second the sun I tell sets. You, Joe, I know what this is. Okay. Wow. This this is the moment of the podcastathon where someone yeah. presses end meeting as opposed to transfer <laughs> meeting. <laughs> this is that half hour segment where no one's streaming, <laughs> no one's doing anything. No they all ran anything. inside. They all ran inside. For like that joke for months. You know, there, there we go. Sunset. <laughs> sun this is We're the gonna party. Party. Gonna be on. Inside. It can be that one moment where everyone goes to get something to eat and take a nap before the night party. Yeah, that's very possible. I mean, it's a twenty-four hour party. You got to rest for a minute. Oh yeah. yeah. Maybe sundown's that time. Maybe. That big- all right, yeah, the sun's gone. Like, yeah. Let's all go inside and take a 30-minute nap while all the lamp lighters come through and, and light up the streets. We'll be right back out. Or, yeah, or, they or they they've, been, going. Listen, they've been waiting all day to fuck, but they don't want to fuck each other because they're all short and ugly. So the second the sun goes down, they all go inside to bang. Everyone looks the same in the dark. So. <laughs> yeah, and before the lamp lighter comes and ruins it. Like, you know, yeah. you can't have foreplay with a lamp lighter coming around because by the end of it, you'll be like, oh, fuck, it's Tom Cruise again. <laughs> <laughs> he needs like a 17 foot pole I, instead of a 12 foot pole I like don't need that Scientology <laughs> fucking foreplay bullshit you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh man uh, so uh good point I never considered that before though that they all just it is, it's don't they? just it's just wildly convenient how the streets are like empty in certain areas well, like, it, it's like, it's like is this to vary guys, and- Mardi Gras over yeah <laughs> is this to vary an anti-luck you know <laughs> that's kind of what I, I think I, I, I said something similar I, I don't I, I do think that might be like a thing like it's it's sort of like 
to have Aaron working against him for once, you know, like kind of like every time he turns down the street, the people are like, Whoa! and then like, you know, they just, they go, they yeah. turn the next corner right ahead of him. And he's like, fuck, I'm alone again. <laughs> that, that's also it. Everybody's gone inside, but there's still the puppeteers running around. You know, but, yeah, I, I say I puppeteers, say, you know, quotes, obviously. <laughs> yeah. Wouldn't, wouldn't, it, wouldn't at least one guy walk up to an actual truck and be like, Bob, what are you doing? Party's over. We're going inside. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, Dude, come fuck me, for Christ's sake. I've been flirting oh, all day. Tom, I put on the spicy mascara, you know. <laughs> Tom, there's definitely one and, of those, and, uh, like, halls where they're doing plays and stuff where like a real Trolloc went in and just killed everyone. We just didn't hear about it. At least one drunk woman thought she was having sex with a guy in a Trolloc costume and it was just a Trolloc. Oh, God. <laughs> That's a big cup. <laughs> Meanwhile, all the dark friends are like puppeting his arms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, 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 the puppeteers are there just like, eh, eh. Eh, eh, eh. <laughs> like, one puppet yeah, this is so easy. Deal. Like she's loving it. I don't know why. Like I'm barely having to move this puppet. This is who said puppeteering was a hard job. Like those leaf cast guys were lying. You know, <laughs> the, the, the puppeteer the moving. The the guy fake moving the left leg is like tr- trying to talk to the guy moving the right arm. Is like just finger asshole a little bit. Yeah, just get get in there. <laughs> we got time. <laughs> 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 So I love it to say. And maybe that's their own maybe life. that's why they live. Pound, fuck it, fuck it. Never mind. Um, I so I have one other note, and it's really a, it goes specifically to the cannon or slash firework turned sideways. It essentially is a cannon because of the explosion that it causes. Correct? You know, we are we all understand that. Yeah. And we sort of and. It's something that I kind of mentioned in the 10 years ago podcast, but we never, we like ripped right past it. I'm like that. We need to talk about that more. <laughs> like this is a fucking tube that's shooting a firework into the sky that uses the earth, the ground as like the base of like the, sh- you know, like just, and Rand puts his chest yeah. against it to like, hold, I, like, wouldn't that fucking kill you? <laughs> like wouldn't the kickback from that? Like uh, yeah, launch like, him across the yard? Would it? I mean, and what's it's in the base of those there. tubes? Yeah. I, who the fuck knows? I, I assume wood. I mean, like, what else? Would, it's not like it's a stone base or something. Yeah, right? it's not like it's just a, a tube just directly on the floor with nothing on the base. There's got to be something on no, the base. No, yeah, it's got to be something on the base, but, like, even still, the base is meant to be set on the the, the ground. You know, yeah. like, like... Maybe the base is a pillow. <laughs> I mean, why would the base not shoot out the back <laughs> as opposed to all the firework going in front? Because Rand's braced against it. But the, I, well, I, the I, I guess what I'm saying is like, how did he not break every bone in his body when that firework went off? Do you remember <laughs> that part in Minute Black? Is it armor going on? You know, yeah, so. yeah, yeah. <sighs> remember that part in Minute Black when he fires the midget cricket and it shoots him five, you know, 20 feet back? That's what yes. it is. It's Men in Black. That's what I'm saying. Like, why did that happen? <laughs> That's, I, I love you compare, said that's what I'm saying. <laughs> did we just compare the dragon cannons to the midget cricket? Yeah. <laughs> I just got an image of four guys around a midget cricket gun <laughs> made out of bronze or just copper with a, or whatever like, with it is. Like a bell it. <laughs> yeah, it's like tap, 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 tap. You know? <laughs> All right, we got it. Um, <laughs> So another thing that I've always been fascinated by, and I'm sure I mentioned it 10 years ago, is there's two Illuminator guilds in the entire fucking world, and it just yeah. happens the world's most reject... Oh, yeah, the most reject. But this, it seems like it has so little to do, really, with the infrastructure of Carrion, despite them having invested a second. I just kind of... You know me, I'm a dumb world-builder asshole. I... I love the idea that it's there because that clearly shows that there's been so much money coming in for years and years and years, but it just dies instantly. And I feel like I wanted more from the Illuminators as a whole, as like a kind of uh, culture world builder thing. You don't think uh, Eludra's part in the rest of the series? She's one person. <laughs> they, 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 yeah, but I mean, like... It feels that I think the rest of them die talking. in the riots and the wars. Yeah, I, I, yeah, there is a lot. Yeah, like and also the Illuminator chapter one house that was in like Tanchico or whatever gets fucked in that. Yeah, in the wars, like from, like. Does that not seem weird to you that they just get so like overwhelmed so easily? Like they live in what it giant- seems to what seems weird to me is that they don't sell weapons. 
Also, what seems weird is that they technically, if you look like at Rand them, accidentally creates a cannon, like they haven't thought about that yet. Like oh. they've never thought to turn that sideways. Like, is this really? where Illusion gets the idea for the dragon cannons? How- what about does how she easily... come up with that idea, or does Matt come up with that idea? That idea? No, no, she comes up with that idea, and Matt, you know, she tries to be oh, like, "Why yeah. would I need she a bell like, finder?" All right, right, right. But, yeah, like, why would I need these okay. things? Right, right. So Rand- maybe she saw Rand knock it over, blames it on Tumas, however you say that bloody name. You know, fires him. You're a great bloody pig. Knows that Rand becomes the Dragon Reborn, or is the Dragon Reborn? Ah, yeah. this thing he showed me firework on its side. I'll turn those into dragons. Yeah, yeah. That, all right, that tracks. I, I, I need, yeah, I need no, that guy's that energy. That makes, sense. that makes sense, Rob. I don't know. I need, I need that guy's energy in my life the next time somebody wants to fire me from a job where all of a sudden I'm actually their boss and I'm hunting them down to kill them. <laughs> 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 I just love the fact she's like, I'm firing you, but before I fire you, you need to clean up all the shit. Yeah. <laughs> like, you can't fire me. I'm your boss and I'm going to kill you. <laughs> but yeah, like, I don't remember that at all. Is there uh, nobody in? Nobody I think back, in back to this... your point, John. I'm sorry. Um, no, I, I it, think there's so few of them because they're so elitist and so cultist. Like you know, no one. Yeah. Can get, you don't know how we do it. We don't let any strangers in. We don't let anyone come see our compound. You know, you basically have to be born an illuminator to do it. Uh, okay, born. I'll take that. So I like yeah, and I bet when that Tantigo house was like taken over or mobbed over or whatever happened to them. Well, yeah, they would. I bet there was like six people inside and they died quickly. And then they were like, they probably blew themselves all up because they didn't know what the fuck they were doing. <laughs> would you read the fact that their walls were not actually like it was plaster over wood versus stone? So I, I that seems wasn't like, like a temper. It was a very new structure though for them, right? But you're shooting like this is their like new oh. chapter house. <laughs> like, you're, you're literally asking for it at this point, and they got. It. I mean, Jono is right. You just said they're the only ones that know what they're doing, and then he just brought up the point that maybe they don't. <laughs> <laughs> All right, maybe some enough. maybe someone's nephew is like, "Fuck you! I'm not working for you, Uncle. I'm going to set up my own chapter house in Kyrian because they're going to pay yeah, yeah. me shitloads." And yeah. he hadn't finished his apprenticeship, goes over and just. Mm, you know, and that but, man's name was Tammuz. Yeah, Tammuz. There we go. That's a better way to say it. I like that Tammuz. I like that. And if it's that uh, easy for Rand to get over that wall, like there's got to be more than one mischievous kid in this gigantic city that's just like, I want to go see some fireworks. Yeah, you think they have yeah, better guards? Sure. Yeah, those steam wagon kids are definitely. <laughs> all you have to do is toss like a Molotov cocktail over the walls, and like all of a sudden you've got yourself like the best show of the fucking year. <laughs> You're also missing half your city in the process, but yeah. Jono John would be part of the group of guys that just like gets drunk and walks over the Illuminator's house and just throws torches over the wall and like hopes they don't put it out in time. I want to set a firework off. Let's just throw fire off the wall, please. You know. Why are there just lit matches? Like I think they're only for like they're, they're not matches, are they? They're like those burning. They're like a punk. Yeah, yeah, that they are punks, but that seems. Why not just have something that's not? Because they have like fireworks shows every night, so they're like set to go for the night. <clears throat> Again, uh, never. It to me just seems a little unnecessarily dangerous. All it takes is one, you know, ten foot man, which doesn't happen often, walking through the aisle awkwardly, and next thing you know, the. They spill out and, you know, shit show happens. Yeah, I, I feel well, this yeah. is a valid point. Um, like, if is you it? have a racking full of hot coals or up. lighter They're sticks... set up for the show. I get that. No, no, hear me out, Joe. Hear me out, hear me out. <laughs> all right, all right. Why, all right. why would you have the racking of hot fuse, hot lighter things, whatever, I don't know, next to the racking that holds the fireworks or next to the fireworks? Agreed. Agreed. Why would you not have them on the opposite side of the courtyard? I don't know. Why do you, why do you make your what walls you out of wood and plaster? <laughs> <laughs> Touche. If you're making your walls out of wood and plaster, then yeah, like putting your yeah. lighters next to your fireworks makes it's sense. It's actually stone walls. Lanford just made it look like plaster and wood. I, I feel bad when the fire marshal walks through. He's just like, holy <laughs> fuck, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, this, like, we've, the fire, mar- the this, the fire marshals are first age, like, you know, they're all dead now, come on, you know, <laughs> yeah, fire yeah, marshals true. are not a thing, like, people like yeah. fires wherever they fucking like, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's good. No, yeah, that's, <laughs> anyway, so let's, like, let's finish this chapter, um, like, like you said. The only said, thing I have, I love that Huron's like, hey, how was the gleaming? 
It's like the best end of the whole time. Like, dude, we just nearly got fucking killed by like, you know, like a random so chick showing up, happens. freaking me out. And Fireworks like, going off, oh, hey, trollics. How, like, how, how, yeah. uh, how was the Gleeman guy? Is he good? Yeah, You've gone a while. <laughs> he told me to fuck off and there was no force him either. <laughs> what, else, what else do you have, Jono? Uh, the only thing I've got is just, again, that continued stupidity of Rand. He gets, doesn't understand where Celine went. And supposedly she went back towards him from Loyal's point of view. They fucking, you know, they don't have a horse, neither does she, but they, they run pretty quickly back to the hotel or the inn. And there's a note from Celine already here. And it's just kind of like, you know, like you'd already read, Rob. And all he does is just puts it in his pocket and smells it later, which I assume means she tucked it in her pussy a couple times. But, <laughs> no, he she jerked. just channeled the smell of it onto the paper. That's he jerked, jerked, perfume. Perfume. How did he jerked, jerked off reading that at least once. Oh, I mean, I can't blame <laughs> <laughs> But not in the ways, because we all know you can't drink off in the ways. <laughs> <laughs> He's got extra... What, Joe, what are you talking about? You obviously can jerk off in the ways. That's how they made those pitted bridges. <laughs> Get some acid. Come, Tommy. No, every time you try to jerk off, you roll over. Matt's staring at you. Roll the other way. Karen's staring at you. I'm just like, I'm going with John. Is like now acid. Come, I'm like, is this murder jerking off in the ways instead? You know, like. Oh, I I like that. (laughs) Pat and Shane cutting his dig with a dagger. Oh, actually, actually, oh. actually, wouldn't everything that Mashinar says be porn for a mirror draw? That actually makes a lot of sense. They oh, are drinking. There off we the go. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, oh my God. That's, that's what why you can't make it to the next one. They just start coming instantly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the Trollocs just keep running and they're like, where were we going? Where'd the mirror? Yeah. <laughs> He's like, leave me alone. I'm trying to finish. <laughs> that's why they die. Mom, stop looking. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, chapter 28. That was, uh, ooh. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I was laughing a little bit much. You know? That's all right. Okay. So, chapter 28, on the fly. Sorry, a new thread in the pattern. Uh, so we've got uh, Perrin. He's watching the mountains of uh, Kingslayer's Dagger um, as they're riding along, unbeknowingly trying to catch up to Rand and her and, and Loyal and that sort of shit. Um, and he's just sort of like... <sighs> You know, he's he's wondering. That, you know, the, the wolf said there were people in the mountains, and he's like, "Are they Fane's dark friends? You know, like are they regular people?" Where the wolves are just like, "Yeah, I don't give a shit." Basically, like people are people. <laughs> <laughs> if they're not twisted ones or never born, we don't give a fuck. Um, right. You know, <clears throat> uh, Matt's sitting there, and he, despite the fact he looks like he's about to drop dead, he. Um, He's fine. He's sitting there juggling his balls, which I don't know if that's actually juggling balls or if he's just jerking off mid-ride, but who knows? Um, but he's getting healing three times a day, and it's not even really making any help, any, any difference to him. He's, he's still wasting away. Um, it's, it's, it's just shit, basically. Rand, uh, sorry, Perrin's sitting there looking at the Aes Sedai and, and, you know, she's riding with Ingtar and it's like, come on, we need to go faster. Like, you know, she... We, we need to find them and, and, and get the dagger and, and fix shit. Uh, but he's also concerned that she knows about Rand somehow, because obviously he knows that Rand can channel, which is, is, is not fun. Uh, as they go along, we're getting some injuries from the wolves, uh, farms, villages, and all that sort of shit. But, you know, they're basically like, you know, it's, just, it's just more... Uh, just more human land. We don't, you know, two legs sort of stuff. We don't, we don't really care. Um aside from you know some of the histories he's getting pushed from the, the wolves of you know uh, previous times uh, he tries to push the wolves out of his head because he's like I don't need this shit going on right now um, and Ingtar falls back to him at this point he's like tell me what the wolves said because despite the fact they've told everyone else obviously he, you know he's a sniffer he's obviously he knows the wolves and Perry's like I've told you ten fucking times dude like you know I can't yeah. tell you again he's like tell me anything I've, you know, I've got to find the horn so obviously Ingtar wants to redeem himself I must find the horn tell me again so you know he, he tells them again someone or some things attack the dark friends and the, and the Trollocs that we found that were killed um, and the wolves call him Shadow Killer and we're like shadow killer oh shit okay that sounds a bit you know it's a bit freaky but the, the wolves are very much in awe of him um, and they say that the trogs have now found shadow killer and that Thane is with them um, and uh, you know like even after so long they remember the smell of Thane the feel of the man made his mouth twist um, so you know the rest of the dark friends have got to be there 
Inktar's obviously is connecting this to like, you know, Shadow Killer is this the dark one, like a nerd draw. I've seen things in the blight that might be called Shadow Killers, you know, whatever else is like, well, the wolves didn't come close to him, but it wasn't a, a nerd draw or Thade because they'll kill that quicker than they'll kill a Trolloc, even if they lose half the fucking pack doing it. Um, and the wolves who saw this weren't even the ones that actually saw this they were like the ones that got it passed on to him before it got passed on to me so you know are we getting fucking Johnny's whispers involved here sort of shit but anyway who knows just like right fine whatever uh you know shut your conversation because I've got an Ioman in the rocks and they're like what huh this far from the bloody waste and I'm thinking mm, you're almost at Kyrie and you're not that far from the waste really but mm, there's a little bit I can understand it and so they you know they look at uh, I, you know and he's just like well I'm fucking telling the truth and Inkar's like alright oh, sorry dude like I wasn't trying to offend you but you know I'm just really surprised and he's like well if Fabian wanted of me to see him or likely I wouldn't have uh, you know I wouldn't have seen him um, and his face wasn't fucking I veiled so you know he's not trying to kill me but you know when you see one there's like you know shit loads more so uh, burn me if he doesn't want to be seen sort of shit but anyway you know Mazima's dropping his lance to you know take him out and then was like hold fucking hold your shit up don't bloody kill him you know if you I'll kill I'll have the ears of any man who doesn't stop where he stands I'm like I'm reading this I'm thinking he's on a fucking horse he's not standing but you know Whatever. Fine. Are, they, are they all hopping off the horses here? Where's they going to lose their ears? Anyway, so they all stop. Ten paces to the man who's just there, just like, I wasn't fucking worried. You know, ten guys on horses. I don't give a shit. I'll take you on. Um, and we get a nice description of him. You know, lace boofs, cloth round, you know, no, no veil on, but... Uh, big dick. Big dick. Yeah, there we go. Uh, short horn bow, which I presume is not his big dick. Uh, quiver bristled with arrows, you know, all sorts of shit like that. You know, this guy's got more gadgets than fucking James Bond going on. Um, and he's, he talks about, I have no pipers to play the tune, but if you wish to dance. And I'm like, yeah, there's another fucking dance you want to play. But this is Urin of the two spires sept of the rain. Ail. He's a red shield. Remember me. And then I feel like we never see him again. <laughs> Oh, we do. That's for do sure. we? Yeah, yeah, we do. I don't think we do. Do we? <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, we, we do. definitely do. Yeah, I think we, a, fair, a fair amount. Oh, okay. I mean, Am I like, wrong? The first several, no, no, you're right, Tom. We see him for the first several books. Like, he works with Rourke for a bit. I think we see him. Mm. Yeah, he's, he's always hanging around. Yes. Yeah. We don't see him too much after, like, uh, Dumai's Wells, but I feel like we see him at least up to it. Oh, Does no, he did he die there? Oh, that's what I was thinking Probably. as well. He, oh, dear. <laughs> All right, so we see Urin who dies at the, the Dumai's Wells. Of the- <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure that's right. Predicting that now. There we go, head cannon. Um, basically, you know, everyone's just like, oh, okay, whatever, fine. Inkar in- in- dismounts, Perrin dismounts, they all go and have a chat. Um, but, you know, because Perrin's never seen one, apparently they're as deadly as Trollocs. Some said they're dark friends, you know, who knows what the fuck's going on. Um, and everyone's like, shit, he looks like Rand. Maybe Rand really is a fucking eye Um, You know, panic station zebra very quietly in the head. Um, but, you know, Perrin's like, that doesn't change shit. You know, when Matt's like, no. And I'm, I'm thinking Matt's like, that changes shit. I still don't trust Rand, even though he's my best mate. Um, but yeah, anyway. And Ingtar's like, we're, we're far from home. Like, you know, let's, let's not have any fights. And he's disappointed. He's like, yeah, fair enough. Okay, whatever. He sees the ice and he's like, my water is yours, wise one. Um, why'd you call me wise one? Like, do you think I'm a eel? He's like, no, but you look at one that has made the journey to Radeon and survived. The ears do not touch the wise ones in the same way as other women or as they touch men. And I'm just like, uh, men? Mm, are you suggesting men that can channel here? Because... You know, the only men that go to Rideon are, are uh, clan chiefs. chiefs, and they don't live as long. No, I think as... he's talking about men in general. Like, oh, oh, okay. So the yeah. men don't men age normally. Period. That's I think that's what he's saying. Oh, because I took that to mean that you know wise ones age slower because of the channeling, and then or as they touch men. I mean, that could mean that men just don't age in the Aiel culture. Men just, you know. <laughs> <laughs> then just have that really good looking skin and like yeah. old and get old and haggard. And, and then the death. Yeah. This is yeah, why we know, two we, w- yeah, we know that guys that are outside in the sun all day long every day without suntan lotion uh, definitely age very well. There we They're go. covered in cloth constantly. <laughs> <laughs> 
um, the face the face you know oh but they're killing yeah. a lot so maybe the face is always covered yeah fair enough and they're like we're chasing Trollocs have you seen them and he's like no what the fuck is this this is the, one of the prophecies this is why we've come out of you know the, the, the threefold land to take back our places of old and Matt's like what the fuck's the threefold land and he's like you call it the waste but to us it's the testing ground uh, testing ground to prove our worth and a punishment for the sin and like, what fucking sin and he's like uh don't actually know but I'm told it's pretty serious so like I yeah, kind of you know I take it kind of serious even though I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about but you know I like, wise ones uh, don't really know <laughs> it's there somewhere maybe mm, who knows um, anyway Trollocs Trollocs Inktar's like Trollocs focus on the Trollocs have you seen them he's like I would have fucking killed Trollocs if I seen him dude leave me alone you know I uh, Varen's in like uh, what is this really on you speaker what are these girls like you know have we missed channelers come on and he's like uh, I don't fucking know I'm a dude like I don't get involved I'm not allowed like yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah. so anyway <laughs> Yeah, she's like, I'm not a wise one, but you need to tell me the, sh- you know, the truth of this shit. And he's like, I can't. It's in the land of the Jedi, or the Thirteenth Clan. I can't speak of them except to name them. Blah 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 blah. blah. You know, like the whole story of the Jedi that is so vague at this point that, not that it's ever really detailed, but you know, it's very vague at this point. <laughs> Many go, few return. Those are marked. All that sort of stuff. Um, and he's like, Are you going to kill me now? <laughs> what? Why would I kill you? <laughs> Why? Well, you know, that's what it says. If we fail you, you will kill me. Have I failed your test? Kill me. Bring your lightning. I shall dance with your lightning. And it's like, all right, dude, whatever. You're ready to die, you know? Um, but she's like, no, no, I'm not going to kill you. Like, you know, unless you mean to harm me with your talk of dancing. I think they have very different ideas of dancing at this point. But he's like... Oh, black as well, she could. Well, that's true, yes. Uh, but, you know, they're in is purple. I have heard talk of. She's black. She's brown. She's purple. I don't know. I, I thought she was. She's a bruise. I thought she was Caucasian personally, but apparently she's multiple colors. You know. She's, <laughs> who knows? He's like, you're not. You're not a maid in the sphere. I cannot attack you. Um, so you know, I you know, except to save life, and even then, I would take wounds to avoid it. And the wise ones have basically sent them out. Um, to, to try and hunt for someone, a man. Uh, he who comes with the dawn. It said there will be great signs and portents of his coming. I saw you were a Shin, uh, Shinarin by your escorts armoring you. The look of a wise one, so I thought you might have world, a word of great events, the events that might herald him. Um, and obviously they inquire about the, the signs. And uh, it said we will know them when we hear of them, as we will know him when we see him, for he will be marked. He will come from the West, be on the spine of the world, be of our blood. He will go to Rilion and lead us. Oh, sorry. Yeah, be of our, he'll go to Rilion and lead us out of the threefold land. Um, and he grabs his spear and basically freaks everybody out. But Varian's like, fucking calm your shit, he's fine. And then he draws a sinuous line and it is said that under this sign he will conquer. And that is basically the ancient sign of the Aes Sedai. Uh, Varian's like, I couldn't tell you where the fuck this guy is. I've heard no sign of him or, or whatever. Mm, I'm calling bullshit on that. Um, and he's like, well, I'll fucking keep searching then because that's the job. And, you know, I'm going to keep doing it till I'm successful. And she nods and he's like, yep, sweet. All right, off I'm going to go then. And, uh, the, you know, some of the others are just like, oh, crazy bloody Aiel. And Masim is growling that, you know, they should have left him for the Ravens. Ingtar's like, I've wasted fucking time talking to a stupid Aiel man who knew nothing. Didn't even know where the bloody Trollocs were. And, uh, yeah, it's just like, right, okay, well, we're basically inside Carrier now, so uh, we don't need them thinking we're here to cause a fucking war, you know, because a party of a dozen people or so is <laughs> a <laughs> war party, <laughs> apparently. Like, <laughs> we've come to invade Carrier, we're going to take over you. Oh, my God, have you brought an army? I brought 12 men for your city of... <laughs> yeah, but, like, I think you the four gauges could probably hold them off, basically. That's, yeah, that's some guys that had too much to drink during happy hour. <laughs> Is this a is this a sign that Varen's black? Did she just straight out lie, or is that like too vague to be considered a lie? Uh, I don't know. Wait, wait, what was the actual phrase? What what particular lines are we talking about? When he's asking, like, she obviously knows it's Rand, and she just straight out says, like, I don't know what you're talking about. Wait, well, he said, I think it's vague enough, enough to where she did. could lie, she could. Yeah, I die her way out of that without being. Yeah, he's like, he who comes with the dawn is said to be great signs, portent of his coming. She Um, says nothing about the dragon. Like, if he had said the dragon reborn and this is what he'll be like, 
she would have had to been like theoretically been like I know the way she uses it is said yeah uh, she asked what the signs are it said we know them when we hear of them and we'll know him when we see him for he will be marked and he will come from the west beyond the spine of the world be of our blood go to Ruidion I can never say that right and lead us out I think he's got enough plausible deniability by her yeah I cannot he is All right, because she doesn't technically know and then I have heard of no signs or portents to guide you to him so you have to know where he is to guide him and so she doesn't have signs yeah. of, she may know go south but there's no signs or portents that say it so yeah. this is a good lie I, I think this works um, yeah, you know. yeah it, it fits I don't think she's the way, I mean, the way he's described she Rand is lying, as well I don't think she's yeah. black Aja lying at this point I think yeah. it's I said I yeah. word twisting yeah exactly yeah. not telling him the truth agreed um all right. Yeah. Rob, that, that's, that's pretty much it. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's a good summation of the chapter. Uh, I, uh, Jonna, I, I always feel like an asshole for wanting to go for a call on me. Yo, we, uh, um, <laughs> I always say your name first because I know you have some, a million things to, that you want to say. That's correct. No, no, one, no one cares. Yeah. We're all fine with it. Uh, I love that Inktar is obsessed over the story of the shadow killer. And it's so funny because he's like, is he evil? He's like, no, he's killing the shadow. He's like, well, I've heard things that would do that. He's like, no, no, wolves are not afraid of him. They're in awe. Like, like it's a really kind of. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. We actually see two new folds of Rand's, you know, of his many, many titles here. You know, next thing you know, the, you know, a sea folk person is going to show up and tell us his other name. Um, because shadow killer is what the wolves call him. He who comes with the dawn uh, is what women call him. I'm sorry, is what the Aiel call him. <laughs> uh, you know, at least he's got that staying power, or he's just an. Um, or he's very late to the party. You yeah, know, like fuck it. <laughs> sun comes up in he six minutes, baby. Let me br- let me brew a cup of coffee, cup of calf, sorry, and yeah. uh, then I'll still have a couple minutes spare, and we can get it on before the dawn. Or yeah, as and the dawn, I'll it yeah. quick. Yeah. Yeah, the soldier should have had that. That should have been there. <laughs> Garbage, but that's not the point here. Uh, I wish we had less to talk about because uh, Rand, the idea of Rand only starting to fuck like three minutes before the dawn is the greatest. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, it's funny. It's, we do know what the sin of the IE is. Um, obviously, it's incest, and that's why they're all gingers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Rob died. Rob really liked <laughs> I don't know. So we have this long-standing joke on the podcast that we said somewhere along the way, where the the wolves talking is like playing telephone, and Perrin literally does it. Says it right here. Like I heard the story from this person, from this person, well, wolf to wolf to wolf to wolf, and it's for me. Yeah. I don't know what they're fucking saying. It's it's so far removed. And yeah. we didn't do it in this episode, so I have no yeah. idea when we get to that. But <laughs> I'm kind of waiting for it when we're like, when do we make this horrible joke about the playing telephone? <laughs> um, they're, just, they're just dogs. Like, it's it's hard to interpret. Yeah. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. If, you know, like, Fail always likes to say that Perrin's the king of the wolves. But with, yeah. as in awe as they are of Rand, like, if Rand could actually talk to the wolves, would the wolves immediately be like, fuck you, young bull? Yeah, I think that's a good call. Yeah. And just join his side immediately. Uh, yeah, especially considering that Perrin's already on Rand's side anyway, so it's just kind of, you know, fuck it. Yeah, they like, never seem in awe of Young Bull, but they're in awe of Shadow Killer. So I don't know. I think they Perrin? have a, a like a great respect for him. Oh yeah, there's definitely later respect. in the books, but I don't. He's think almost, they... He's almost more of a novelty. They're like, oh, you can talk to us. Yeah. Oh, wait, you, wait, you're friends? I don't know, man. Shadow no, killer? No, no. no. Later, <laughs> yeah, that's later it. Yeah, on, it's like, he, you he can drink them to the last battle. I mean, like, uh, he, like. Yeah. It's honestly, and this is going to sound weird. So, like, my second degree in college was Spanish, and I could not look more like a white guy if I tried with my red beard and like, blonde, brown, whatever the fuck hair. Uh, but when I, go, you know, talk to people when I go to the, you know, Caribbean or whatnot, and I start speaking Spanish. Uh, like in the Dominican or shit and they like instantly want to talk to me but at the same time they look at me like does he even know what he's saying I feel like that right now young bull I feel like that's parent just kind of like hey uh, guy left do you see and they're like <laughs> and they're like I, you seem like you're trying um, 
And I yeah, think if you go back to America, they call you the king of the Spaniards. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All, all I'm getting now is Robin Williams in Mrs. Doubtfire, where he's like trying to apply for the housekeeping job, and it goes, I am job. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and, the, and the wolves are there just like, ah, we've got no one else to fill the position, but okay, fine. And yeah. then it's just like, oh, shadow killer. Thank you. You know? <laughs> I don't do the boys because I used to be one. Later on, parents like, I think I, uh, I know that guy. We're friends. Yeah. Me and Shadow Killer, um, we know way back. And uh, Hopper's there just like, dude, I'm dead. I'm not your friend. Yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, so like you said, you're in, by the way, a total badass. Just watching the two dudes try to ride it down. He just sits there. Anyway, so. One of we, which is Massima, who sucks. Well, but there's also nine other dudes who do it with him. Like, Massima goes first. I don't know, dude, no, with it, by the way, is the name of my podcast. I thought it was a nine. I thought it was four. He said ten, I believe. I don't know. I just threw a number out there because I was trying to speed read. Um. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and like you mentioned, Baron is delighted by this talk of wise ones. Like she's just like, you know, the brown jaw of her just kind yeah. of like gets I think it's the one thing that could have been said in this entire journey that would distract her from Rand as her focus. Yes. You know what I mean? She seems like, wait, I'm sorry, what was that? Tell me more about this. And he's like, I don't have any answers for you. Uh, let's kill. I'm, let's kill each other. I guess we're going to kill it, each other now. I mean, is, is there? Holy oh, shit! Yeah. Is there an aspect of her thinking perhaps these are some channelers that I can get involved with that aren't black that yeah, probably, know, might help maybe. me get out of my situation? I think, I mean, no, because I don't think she, she's not like Ingtar. Ingtar is in this situation as a dark friend that he doesn't, it seems like he doesn't want to be. Yes. And kind of like seeking a way out slash redemption. Whereas Varen is like very purposefully a double agent. (laughs) Like she yeah, knows she, exactly what she's doing. I don't think she wants out. She wants to get deeper in. Yeah, she's without like, compromising well, herself. I she's agree. Like, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm in. I'm a member of the club. I've, you know, sworn allegiance. So I'll just get as much as I can yeah, out of it, sort of thing. Varen's well aware that she's not. She's only a dark friend on paper. Like you know what I mean. Like she's just doing this to fuck with them. Like that. She's, yeah. she's got a purpose. Like she knows what she's doing. Yeah, whereas, yeah, as you say, Ingtar is just like... I don't think she feels trapped in any way, I guess. So. Yeah, yeah, no, Ingtar feels... Yeah, no, I agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're making sense, yeah. Uh, I don't know what, what we were talking about 10 years ago, but Tom said something about Ingtar is the most half-assed dark friend of all time. He's not winning any awards at their dark friend parties. <laughs> oh, I'm not that. really. I really have no idea what we were talking about, but I wrote that down. I was like, I love the note. I don't know why. I mean, he he's the dark friend that gets the participation award, you know, rather yeah. than like, you you know, you ran the 100 meters and came first. Here's a gold medal. He's just like, you turned up to the sports day, bro. Here's, here's a participation yeah. award. Yeah, like, good. Here you like go. Third yeah. place you, over and over. You because... RSVP'd and actually came. Here's, yeah. here's a medal, you know. <laughs> you didn't yeah, do anyway. better. This didn't do as well as you would think for a guy with this amount of like he's a noble, he's a good good fighter. It's a kind of underachieving motherfucker, really. For as, as far as dark for I love this whole shit from Urian though. Like in terms of how much information we get from an Aiel, it's all it, it is very info dumpy, but it's done in such a clever and interesting way that it doesn't feel that way. Which yeah. Robert Jordan does pretty well, like a lot of the time. Like you never feel like. I mean, sometimes when Rain talks, you're just like, oh, here comes a Rain info dump, and she's just going to tell us a bunch of shit. But, like, this seems very situational and, like, interesting, and it's got a lot of seeds of what will come later, and it has nothing to – and it's still so vague and open-ended that it doesn't – like, now I see it as a giant info dump because I know everything. But, like, at the time, I was like, what are they talking about? This is fascinating. Tell me more about these little things. Yeah, it's It's very – it's a really conversational – yeah. yeah, it's really cool. And it doesn't seem forced. And it's, it's, I, I, it's a really great, like, little insight into the IEL. If anything, he reveals so much. The only thing that I would pick apart about it is that he reveals way more than, like, an IEL normally would. I think. Yeah, you would, you would think that after this, like, if a wise woman had heard him, they, she would just be like, what the fuck are you doing? Well, yeah. it, but you can lay that at the feet of he thinks Varen is a wise one in some way, or like he knows she's Aes Sedai, so like he's yeah. he's giving her information because he's scared not to, almost in a way. Like, yeah, I mean, yeah. there, there's there's something there, and he's on like a quest. It, he's on a quest for information. Yeah, so he's and like, he's by himself, and he's on a quest for information. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I, I've, like, I've, I've got to find work. this rare event, and I need to, you know, <laughs> I need to go to exceptional circumstances and and sort yeah. of like try things out. I suppose. You got to stay out by himself, right? There's like 20 more hiding. 
I, I assume like, so. Yeah. <laughs> behind a blade if they're of grass. Not near, if they're not nearby, like, I mean, if they're not like right next to him, they're nearby. Like he's probably with oh. like at least three or four other guys. And they're all stood right behind the group and no one's noticed, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're all talking to him and they all just like stood up behind them. And then <laughs> one's on Massimo's No one turned board. around. <laughs> <laughs> one's on yeah. Massimo's actual back. <laughs> yeah, just, they're all sitting there just plaiting the horses' tails, just like, they'll notice us eventually, yeah, you know. Yeah, Massimo turns around, there's one in the saddle. Oh, oh, sorry. But, hey, man. Uh, so I love uh, this, just kind of like, he who comes to the dawn, you know, Ray, one of us, but Ray's there. And everyone's been talking about the fact that Ram looks like an IEL. Like, and so he pretty much just says, like, do you guys know, like, a tall ginger raised around here, but not in our area, but looks like me? No. No. <laughs> I like That's only it. only Matt and Perrin are like, wait a minute. And none of the shenarians are just like, wait, yeah. That guy was with us yesterday. Yeah. yeah. Massimo's like, I hated that guy when I first looked at him. He looked like an eel. Why do you ask? <laughs> <laughs> it's true. He's like, someone's like, why does Massimo hate me? You look like a fucking eel. I think, I the, think the idea that he, that ran to the Shinerians would be the person that they're looking for is so ludicrous that they're just like, well, not that guy. But Matt, I don't know, and, Rand, <laughs> Matt and Perrin like know what Rand is, so like it would make sense. So for like you they, hate uh, yeah. I feel like they should have just been like, yes, we literally all know who you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. Well, again, and he, Matt and Perrin do that, and he and loud, he magically man. disappeared in a puff of smoke like two days ago. <laughs> yeah, sounds like that, your, sounds like your guy. Yeah. See, what they were doing is they were like, dude, some guy is writing a story about us right now. And so while he's here in this scene writing this moment, we're going to pretend to be fucking stupid. But as soon as he fucks off to the next scene, like, we're going to tell you what's happening. So just disappear and then come back. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think unnamed shen- like the unnamed shenarians like number eleven and number twelve at the back of the group are just like why doesn't Ningtar know who he's talking about? <laughs> <laughs> like, why the fuck is this idiot leading us when he doesn't know that why Rand is a fucking human? You know why is he not mentioning Rand? I mean, I would say. I, I would say something, but Una will curse us out. Now, what what they've got is they've got. If you've ever seen like the Shrek DVD, like the intro bit before you press play, you've got the whole like swamp activity going on, and then you've got Donkey in the background just jumping up, going, "Pick me, pick me!" You've got the Shinarans in the back being like, "It's Rand, it's Rand, it's Rand!" You know, <laughs> they're so far back, no one's fucking paying attention. You know. <laughs> That works for me. You know, I, th- so, I thought that we when say, I read this too, we, I thought it was just like the Shrek DVD yeah. mini like, screen. <laughs> should we should we say something? I'm like, fuck no. I'm still pissed off that they made me swim across the river in my underwear with my yeah. knife and my teeth <laughs> to yeah, go exactly. find a dead mirror draw. I'm not going to... Yeah, them. like... They can figure it out. The rest no of them just fucking walks, you know? <laughs> I don't know. I feel like someone should have brought it up, but it would kind of... Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know, train wreck the story a little bit, wouldn't it? So, okay. yeah, I, I guess this is still not as dumb as like, what's dumber? Not connecting the you know, the dog, your ginger giant friend who looks like a dude, <laughs> just or, like an IEL that everyone mistakes for an IEL, <laughs> yeah, or Rand not understanding how it is that Celine, uh, just is fucking normal, <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, like, you know, in fairness. Well, I guess no. I'd go with Rand's point of view because he's at least trying to fuck her. Like he's like he's got the smell of pussy under his nose, and he's like, you know what? I'll let it happen. Perrin presumably doesn't have any sort of like maybe he's got like wolf pussy in his nose, and that's kind of. <laughs> I mean, maybe he's got a thing for Ginger Ayum, and, and he's just like, I don't want to give Rand away because then I can't have him. You know, <laughs> it could be. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> So that's Twatcast for this week. If you have any comments or questions, the best way to find us is on Twitter at Twatcast. Listen, wherever you get your podcasts, two, that's two. You can email us at twatcast at gmail.com. You can join us in conversation on our Discord, ser- Discord server. You really can't. Uh, you can. Permanently link to the top of our Twitter profile. Do you have conversations in there? I mean, I uh, comment <laughs> periodically. <laughs> I mean, I, I commented earlier this week. <laughs> Did I respond? I don't what? know. I, I haven't looked back, to be honest. <laughs> No. All right, never mind. No. It, it, you it did, if you worked. did respond, you didn't at me, so that's you know I didn't get. It's a very I mean, slow moving conversation. 
That's very much in my face that I said nobody uses it. And then we have somebody on the show in real time that said I did. So <laughs> <laughs> never mind. In fairness, it's we don't respond to him. We're on Patreon way more often than we used to be at patreon.com slash twatcast. If you enjoy the show, it's not an if, it's because you do enjoy the show. Help us out, give us some of your money, which is more than we have, and enjoy exclusive sexual content only on Patreon. Give us all of your money. Oh, that was good. Yeah. Twatcast theme songs brought to you by Taffy Bennington at Sing with Taffy on Twitter and Anarchy 101 on YouTube and also everyone's favorite musician on hashtag Twitter time. Andrew at Andrew Ganhold on Twitter and Andrew Barter Time on YouTube. I'm excited this is going to be on this episode. Yeah, this. Oh, you know what? I I should have said that at the top of the show. I kind of forgot, but um, okay. it's a longer song, so it's something that we're like, we can't put that at the front every time because people are very used to like our very succinct <laughs> thirty second intro, very, like, and then we're just talking, intro, like, yeah, yeah. So but like, I'm just like, I guess I'm I'm going to do it for this episode at least. But I mean, like, maybe it'll just be the song that plays us out every time. I don't know. We we, we haven't really gonna, talked about it, but are you are you going to put him at the front this week? Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm definitely going to put him at the front this week. Look, here's the point. It's, we have two theme songs. It's incredible. Better. Yeah, that is that. See that alone, that's amazing. Like you know, that is yeah. That's cute. It's more than more than is, enough that we can have. And it's nice that Andrew doesn't get the back end for a change. He gets the front end. You know, that's nice for Andrew. You know, so. <laughs> Andrew, <laughs> well, this will be the. I think normally, like normally, we'll probably put it. You know, if we can we'll get, probably put if it we, the back end. Do you guys realize if we get like somewhere between seven to nine more theme songs, we can put out an album? I like where your head's at. I mean, there's, anyway, there's, there's a few um, musicians out there, you know. It's doable, it'll it'll be called yeah. various artists. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Here yeah, I yeah. am. <laughs> it'll, actually, it'll be it, it's going to be called. Now that's what I call Twatcast Volume One. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, what a title. Now that's what I All I'm right, well twat. now now <laughs> No you don't put the cast in there. Okay, just be like now that's big. what I call twat. <laughs> <laughs> now that's what I call twat, volume one. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to do that, put that together with everybody else's theme songs that actually sell this fucking album. <laughs> anyway, thank you, Rob. Thank you, Rob. Thank you on the show. You've been a wonderful guest. Thanks for being on the show. And also, obviously, plug everything on the planet. Tam jokes, your How podcast, long have you your cooking got? show. No, 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 no. It's quick. So uh, Twitter is at Malkiri. Uh, well, you can search Malkiri Talks. You can search Malkiri Talks on YouTube, um, any good podcasting station, and you will find all of my content. I do theories, cooking, narrations. Um, I've, I've even got fucking merchandise going on. So, you know, you can you can get into the Frosty Mug Society if you want to buy one of my mugs. Um, but, yeah, you can find me in any podcasting station. Malkia Talks on YouTube and, um, you know, Malkiria on, on Twitter, and you will find all of my stuff going on. It's shared everywhere. I'm on Instagram, but if you found the other stuff, you'll find Instagram. It's not fucking difficult, so. Yeah, yeah. Right. Nice awesome. and easy. I use the same name on everything, pretty much, which makes it really, really simple. And, and as really you should, easy. yeah. Yeah. And that name is Malkia Talks. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> he said that like three times, Shana. I yeah. know. M A L K. No, I'm <laughs> at symbol. Yeah. Um, join us next week for the Wheel of Time book two, The Great Hunt, part ten, covering chapters twenty nine through thirty two. I'm Joe. You've been listening to Jono, Jono, and Tom. Still your math. Keep the change of filthy animals, Rob. Say goodbye, Rob. Bye, everybody. Gareth <laughs> Briney, then. <laughs> or was I meant to say bye, Rob? Wheel of Time. Reread podcast explicit.